It's Friday, December 8th, 2023, and this is the Talk Film Society podcast. I am your host, Marcelo Pico, Editor-in-Chief of Talk Film Society, here yet again to start a new series uh, of the Talk Film Society podcast. Once again, we're diving into the awards season. This time, awards season 2023. With me for this series... Uh, for as many episodes as she wants, <laughs> as my co-host, uh, it's Siobhan Irving. Hello, Siobhan. Hi, Marcelo. Uh, Marcelo, I, you were you were goofing around there. I want to be here for the whole deal, just like I was last. Uh, well, I want to be here <laughs> for the whole deal. You know, we'll see. If I'm, I'm Josh, and because I think last year we, yeah, you were on. I think every episode. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I was. It was. Although I remember now, there was a point where <laughs> we recorded like half an episode, and you were so sick that you tapped out, <laughs> and we stopped the episode. <laughs> That's true. That is true. And that we we split an episode that. in half. I think we did a part two because you because I, I gave you the option of uh, at any point if you want to stop, just stop the episode, and you did. Uh, Siobhan, you have that right here too. If you want to stop an episode. We can stop it. It's, we can stop it now. Two minutes in, and just say we're done. Both of us, both of us, reserve that right to use it any yeah. time, once per season. Uh, uh, what do you call that? A black ball. We have one black ball. Yeah, it's a black ball. Is that what it is? I don't know what that. I, I don't fucking know what the hell is uh, a black ball. Where'd you I, get I, that from? I oh, I swear I I heard this phrase where uh you get like one uh um like. I might cut this whole thing out. Is it, is it like an eight ball in the corner pocket? No, it's like not an eight ball. You know what? Then that me... ends the game. Hold on, I'm going to Google this. This is going to be eight ball is uh... the black ball, but like if you don't Hold do on. it in order, the eight ball ends the game. Here it is. Okay, I'm I'm not and blue balls. I know wrong. About that. All right, we're, listen, we're, we're gonna we're gonna get to that here in a bit. It's not going to be a blue <laughs> show. Okay, it's going to be very serious. We're going to reserve the blue stuff for uh, another series, but on this show, we're super serious. Listen, black yeah. ball. You're right. Definition, to reject uh, someone, usually a candidate, applying to become a member of a private party. That's an example of when a black ball would be used. Typically used uh, by means of a secret ballot. But in this case, our black ball is we're allowed once a season to say we're ending the episode (laughs) mid-episode. So that's our black ball for the season. Okay. All right, put that in your front pocket. Uh, save it for later. Who are we? I wrote that in the notes. We got to introduce ourselves. I'm Marcelo. Um, I'm Siobhan. Yes. Okay, moving on. No. Uh, if this is the first time you're hearing us, well, congratulations. We podcast a lot. Uh, we, we've we been mainly doing uh, commentaries for the Patreon over at uh, talkfilmsociety.com slash Patreon. Or patreon.com slash talk from society. Both links work. Both links will get you to uh, our, our archive of many commentaries we've been doing for the last like two years now, at least. Um, uh, Siobhan, uh, uh, if somebody were to say, hey, I want to listen to their commentaries and hear them, you know, go all out and, and, and hear stuff I can't, you know, listen to here on the free feed and you know as we know everything behind a paywall is better than what's on the free feed what would you recommend to them what commentary would you go listen to this and you'll get to know Shivana Marcelo a lot more um I think <clears throat> nothing nothing okay I, I no I think that we reveal the most about ourselves as people uh perhaps in our hmm in our I'm going to go with Terrifier 2 commentary. <laughs> or Tenet. You know what? Tenet. I think my Tenet. <laughs> Tenet. Okay. <laughs> that might, yeah. We, we get Marcelo's serious film watcher and we get my absolute clueless uh, anger at a film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if, if you want to hear more of us and our, uh, the, our, our definitive takes on film in general, listen to that Tenet commentary <laughs> and you'll get it. <laughs> or, or Spawn. I think we had Dark, a good spawn. Dark Man was quite fun. I thought Dark Man was fun. We, we we shouldn't overlook also the month of saw commentaries we did in uh, September. So 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, yeah, so if you're a saw fan, we've, we've, we, we are as well. We've done a commentary for every single saw film. Yeah, so yeah. like, look, if that appeals to you, uh, good, good because it's there. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to bring all that up just to say, we're saving all that silliness for the commentaries. There's going to be a more this serious, is a serious show. This is a serious show. We are right. talking about a serious topic, which Se- is awards. The, <laughs> the most serious topic there ever can be. <laughs> awards season. Awards. <clears throat> uh, uh, um, I was going to say prophesizing. That's not the word. Uh, uh, pro- pro- procrastination. That's not it either. Um, well, prog- we will be doing a lot of that. <laughs> prognosticating. We're is that starting it? this. Prognosticating. Yes, that's yes. it. You got it. Come um, on. but okay. So I am Marcelo. I've been watching a lot of movies lately. A lot of 2023 awards bait. Uh, you know, for for lack of a better word. Um, Siobhan, how have you been doing? Okay, the season has started. You know what? Let's jump yeah. in. What do you think is going to win Best Picture? <laughs> This out of the gate. What's going to win gate. Best Picture? Hot take. Let's go. Let's go right now. Come on. We're talking uh, okay, awards you know 2023. What? <clears throat> best Picture. Right, yeah. Your pick. Oscars. Start of the season. Start of the season. My, my initial pick. Gunshot. Boom. Uh, start I got to go. I have I have to go with uh, that little, that little uh, stinker, uh, oh. Oppenheimer. Oh. Um. Okay. I think that I th- that is my initial pick uh, at the start of this Oscar season. We'll see what come May for best picture. You're you're picking Oppie. Uh, okay, now ask yeah. me what what, what I think is going to win best picture. Uh, Marcelo, that was my choice for best picture winner. Um, I would love to hear yours. I'm going to go and thank you, friend, for asking me. I'm going to go with Killers of the Flower Moon. As my pick to win Best Picture, uh, 2023, and this is this is our dynamic. This is yeah, great. This We've is got it. we're bouncing off each other, you know, and like I go Oppenheimer, you go Killers of the Flower Moon. Like we got this crazy. That's it. Like, it's it's just yeah, like that. That's the magic of this. So if you're not into this by now, I don't know what to get. Do then get out of here. I don't. You know. You know. Like, we. Seriously. You know. We. We. You know. We tried to sell our wares, you know, a few minutes ago. Go listen to our commentaries. Um, and if you did that and you came back here and you're still not satisfied, I don't know what to tell you, okay? There's plenty of content out there for you to listen to. If you're not happy with our <laughs> Patreon commentaries or this podcast as it is now, get out. <laughs> okay, anyway. Go. <laughs> um, Siobhan, uh, yeah. I, was, I was trying to ask you this before I threw that curveball at you, but... Um, I uh, we'll we'll get to what we've been watching because th- that's a regular segment on the show. But overall, Siobhan, your thoughts on the Oscar season, and most importantly, have you seen any movies this year? <sighs> okay, Marcella, I'm going to tell you. According to my letterbox, okay, last year I watched a lot of movies. Okay, yeah. Uh, com- comparatively to what I had been the last few years, because uh, I kind of fell off around COVID, and last year I ended up watching like an amount of movies that was pretty large for me this year. I have watched over 100 more movies than that. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So you would think, boy, this person's seen a lot of movies and uh, you're right. Yeah. Cause you just said it. Yeah. Um, but, uh, have they all been awards bait new year movies? Not necessarily of the 250 something movies I've seen this year. Uh, I have 50 uh, new release movies. So I don't have the best well to draw from, I think, Marcelo. You know, and that's fair because, again, that's our dynamic, okay? <laughs> I'm, I, I, I don't know how many new movies I've seen this year. But as, as, I, open my, up, as I open up my Letterboxd app, I'll say this. In, just yesterday, just last night, uh, I watched Ferrari. Which, uh, you know, awards contender. And just last week, I saw the Iron Claw. Uh, I saw, I saw, you saw Iron Claw. I saw Iron Claw. Oh, uh, I'm jealous. Uh, what, what other contender did I see? I mean, of course, I've seen May December. A lot of people have seen May December. That's that. That's on Netflix uh, already. Marcella, I didn't know that was already on Netflix, or I would have watched it. 
Yeah, uh, that, that'll come up on this week's episode. Uh, oh, by the way, yeah, this week's episode, we're talking Best Supporting Actresses, and we, we watched the film Girl Interrupted. It's almost like we never have done a podcast before, but yeah. Right. So, yeah, we're theming every episode around a different category that will be coming up at the Oscars, and uh, we, we're starting off with the Best Supporting Actress, as they do at the awards themselves. Yes. Um, but anyway, uh, let's see. The year... 2023. I'm still on Letterbox trying to find how many movies I've seen. Uh, it doesn't give me a number, so screw this. Um, okay, yeah. I mean, okay, but I, I have the list here. So I have seen... Uh, I saw American Fiction, which is a, a, a big awards uh, contender. Um, and that's not coming out for at least another few weeks. Uh, so, I mean, you know, what I'm trying to say is... Sure, I have a leg up. I'm going to these early screenings. Siobhan... Uh, at least you're aware enough to to have, uh, 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 you know, you know, you know what you need to see. You may not have caught up on everything, but you're aware enough. You know what the Oscars are, right? Yeah, I, I I'm, I know, I know what the Oscars is. I have, you know, what, genuinely this year more than it, uh, more than any other, I feel like I'm kind of out of the loop on what could possibly, what will be being nominated and such, which, uh, you know what, that's fine. I, 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 I will be learning throughout this process as, uh, as, as all of you will be as well. Yes. You know, and this is a teaching podcast first and foremost. And I think that I'm going to start my catch up hard. I have a big list of films. I wrote out a big, big, big list of movies from this year that I want to see. And I, I sourced out, uh, where I can find them. Uh, unfortunately for me, uh, most of them still cost money, but Hey, hopefully yeah. as the season drones on, they'll be added to streaming services and such. Yeah. Um, it's funny you say this is a, 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 a you know, this is a learning tool. Cause as I was doing my research for this episode, I thought, you know, I hope it is. I think I said this last season when we did the Oscar awards race for 2022, I said, Hey, and I'm I'm being half serious when I say this. I want people to listen to this show and go, okay, uh, Marcelo and Siobhan, they're, they're giving me, the listener, all this information. I'm learning things about the Oscars, about the race that is and, and once was. Uh, take this information to the bank, listeners. I want you to take everything we say, all the predictions, take them to your Oscar pool, and win that oscar pool your friend's oscar pool the work oscar pool now now you you say to yourself hey marcelo you sound crazy you know why would i listen to you let's go back last year okay i'm gonna ask you siobhan siobhan did, did the talk film society have an oscar pool last year i think we did yes yeah and who won that oscar pool last year uh, if I had to take a guess, I'd say Marcelo won that. God cool. damn right. Yes. And I also would like to take a guess as to uh, if we've had Oscar pools in the past. I think Marcelo's won like every single one of them. <laughs> so, and that's and that's with people who uh, uh, allegedly no film. So, <laughs> talk film society. It's in the title. Talk film society. They're not all like me. Uh, a majority of the people there actually do know a lot about movies. Yeah, uh, you know, I yeah, yeah, and j- just to corroborate uh, what you just said, I I believe I have won every single Oscar poll that Talk Film Society has run. Uh, I, uh, I, I you know I may have tied once with uh, uh, somebody on the site, but anyway, uh, I'm not making money off of this. I'm just doing it just for the kicks. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, last year there was a, a money Oscar poll, and I didn't you know even I I did not participate in the money part of it. I just said I'm just put my uh, uh, my picks in there, see how far I get. And yeah, I got first place. I'm saying all of this, not to brag, but I'm just saying this as just, you know, listeners, you could learn a thing or two. Let's go back last year. I dug up the, the <laughs> I, I, I dug up the pool. Okay. Siobhan, I have your picks. Uh, I have my picks. Um, okay. So I got 19 out of 23 categories, right? Um, in terms of predictions, in terms of the Oscar poll. Siobhan, you got 11 out of 23, right? Pathetic. Yeah. I didn't say that. You said it. Now, we can do better. I went through all of that just to say we can do better. Absolutely. Uh, Yeah, so that's what we're here to do. We're here to learn. We're here to uh, put money 
on these awards races and win big in March. <laughs> okay. So that's who we are. That's that segment done. Next segment. Uh, Siobhan, what have you been watching over there? Okay. What have I been watching over here? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, so besides from things that pertain to this episode, um, and by the way, yeah, we did watch the movie Girl Interrupted. Uh, Best Supporting Actress winner, Angelina Jolie. We'll get to that later. But like Best of the Year watch, I did uh, hit one. I, I hit uh, St. Omer. Oh, yeah? Um, and I do believe I will be bringing that up uh, in a few places. Uh, truly, truly loved it. A very uh, devastating, contemplative film. Uh, and then I watched uh, the... <laughs> the I watched the movie Triple Frontier on Netflix. <laughs> what is that? That is uh, Oscar Isaac uh, getting together his old war buddies to make a big score in uh, South America somewhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, by ripping off some. And we got Ben Affleck, uh, Charlie Hunnam, uh, Pedro Pascal, and uh, a fifth guy in there. And then I watched the sequel to that, uh, Six Underground. Um, that's not the Michael sequel. Film. You're goofing. Trip. I'm the the three and the six. Uh, and the you're you're goofing. You're having fun. And I watched Six Underground and uh, that a Michael Bay film I had not seen. And uh, I, I've been prioritizing movies I've not seen. Um, oh yeah, I, I I did enjoy them both a lot, especially Six Underground. That's a uh, Michael Bay peak of his powers. It's a good Michael Bay movie. Uh, I mean, I had the pleasure of seeing it in a theater. I think I was one of the few who saw Six Underground in a theater. Um, and I uh, I recorded um, a podcast about it for the Michael Bay podcast, uh, Bayham, that I did with Diego Crespo and Mike Schindler back like three years ago. Um, yeah, Bayham. Yeah, Bayham the podcast. Check it out. Uh, it's somewhere. Uh, was that all you've been watching, Siobhan? I uh, watched Saw X twice. I wonder why. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Oh, and uh, did I tell you I watched Barbie? I don't think. Yes, I'm... I did. I talked to you. I talked to you about Barbie. We talked so about we talked it. Talked about these things on other shows. Free Fire. I watched that piece of shit movie. Free Fire. I think you mentioned you watch again. I think you you, uh, you mentioned this on our Patreon show on our commentaries uh, podcast. Yeah. Um, but you know what? Okay. So yeah, my other, my other award season movie was uh free fire or not free fire. <laughs> <laughs> Barbie. Barbie. Um, Le, uh, and, Siobhan, uh, let me ask you this. Will Barbie come up in the conversation later? Barbie will come up in the conversation later. This episode. If, if not, if not from me, from you, I'm sure. Maybe. Um, but you know what? You know, <laughs> I keep forgetting we did do the summer series where we talked about Barbie and Oppenheimer, and you went the entire series without having seen either. <laughs> yeah, uh, and my Oppenheimer viewing still has yet to happen. <laughs> okay, you so <laughs> yet you are so. calling it. You're saying uh, that's going to win Best Picture is Oppenheimer. I, I, I don't have to have seen it. I right. Have to, I just no. have to know it, it hit the it hit the zeitgeist really hard. That's the thing. We don't have to see all these movies. I haven't seen every single movie. I've seen uh, Oppenheimer. I, I've seen Oppenheimer, of course, four times now. Four uh, times in the movie theater. I've seen Barbie like six times in the theater. Um, but I, you know what? We'll talk Barbie more later. I'll bring it up for sure. I'm sure you'll bring it up. But for right now, this is it. This is the exclusive. Main feed exclusive. Finally, Siobhan saw Barbie. Siobhan, your review of Barbie. Take it away. Good, uh, good fun time. Okay, moving on. No, I, I mean, I, I, I do think it deserved all the hype it got. Um, it, it lived up to it. Um, I'm sure I would have had more of a fun time if I had went to it in theaters, if only I'd known. Uh, and you didn't know it was in theaters? I No, I just had no clue. And uh, <clears throat> completely missed it somehow. But I, yeah, I had a wonderful time watching it. And uh, I do think it's a very uh, free-spirited, creative uh, film with uh, some interesting things to say on the subject uh, of what it's talking about. So, which is like being a girl and stuff. Uh, I, yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. 
I enjoyed it a lot. And uh, certain as I, I'm trying to talk around like aspects that I did a lot like because they'll 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 come up. Okay. All right. But but you liked it. You did. Yes. Okay. Good. All right. Now watch Oppenheimer. Uh, yeah, just make it cost less money. <laughs> you know, I four K. I'll buy money on the four K, but like that's like out of print. Well, that's we can talk about that slot uh, a bit because yes, Oppenheimer the four K discs it, uh, it made news what two weeks ago when uh, it came out and it, it it was sold out everywhere uh, for for days on it. I think Amazon restocked it for a while a few days ago, but I think they're out of stock again. Uh, I've been cutting back on buying. Uh, movies. I told myself maybe I- I'm okay not having Oppenheimer uh, on 4K. But then I I, I was curious. I-, I checked out my local Best Buy. Uh, I was sold out for days, and then finally there was one copy at a at a Best Buy nearby. And I go, you know what? This is it? You got me. Like, this is it. And then I picked up my copy of the 4K of Oppenheimer, and I'm eager to see it again at home. Uh, because as Chris Nolan says, uh, you, you, you got to get the disc. Otherwise, you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, this might be like a PlayStation thing where um, they they just remove the, you know, the the your your digital library and you can't. You, what are you going to do? You're going to go, hey Sony, those are my uh, uh, bytes of data. Uh, please don't take them away. Do you have any idea when I'm talking about Siobhan? Did, did the PlayStation do that? I, I've I've generally heard about this, but no, I don't actually know. But I know that they have some DRM bullshit that they like took your money, took your shit away. Yeah, so I think if you bought certain, um, you know, for lack of a better word, content on PlayStation uh, through their uh, the media uh, library, uh, they're rem- they're removing some of it because they can. So, uh, you you spent that money. It's on your PlayStation, but now it's gone. Potential chance that I have spent some of that money and it's gone. Like, yeah, I, I actually but don't know. Chris Nolan says, if you want to keep your movies in your home, uh, where the digital police can't steal them, gotta get it on disc. Um, yeah, he's, he's so, right. Yeah, he's wise right. Wise words. Right. Wise words from a wise man, future Oscar winner. Uh, all right. Moving on, what have I watched? Ask me, ask me, Shavon. Uh, Marcelo, that's uh, you know my. I watched that movie Sisu. Uh, the what? Sisu, the app? No, not not Sisu. <laughs> Sisu. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Wait, did that uh, movie come out this year? Legitimate it question. It did come out. this oh, year. Wow, I, I did see it. Yeah. Um. And yeah, the, like that was like like a supposedly what it looked like, what it seemed to me as being marketed as is like John Wick but he's an old guy fighting Nazis. That's how it was advertised. Is that yeah. from the producers of John Wick comes uh-huh. a new John Wick. This time he's old. <laughs> and uh they uh you know, it didn't quite hit that for me, but I'm not not upset that I watched it. Yeah. I f- I felt the same way when I saw it. Um I think it it came out early this year in theaters. Um, I think right after John Wick, because I do remember uh, John Wick Chapter 4, after that came out, um, uh, this trailer came out saying, hey, from the producers of John Wick, it's like, hey, we got some new John Wick for you. Uh, open up. Mm-hmm. Um, open up wide. New John Wick coming in. And yeah, it's it was fine. It's it's, it's it is fine. what it is. Yeah, yeah it's fine. It's not uh, bad. Marcelo, that's what I've seen this year. Uh, what what okay. have you watched this year? <laughs> that's those are the movies I've seen this year. All right, so now it's my turn. I mean, like, like I said in the opening, I've seen a lot of movies seemingly in the last few weeks um, that are awards contenders. I'll talk about them as the season goes on, but I quickly mention I saw. Ferrari, uh, that's coming out, uh, I guess, wide release later this month. Uh, it's a good Michael Mann movie. Um, I'll talk more about one performance later. Uh, but if you if you want, uh, you know, uh, if you want a Michael Mann movie about a guy who does uh, well at his job, uh, who who just grumbles and doesn't laugh, you know, for two hours straight, uh, Ferrari's the movie for you. It's good. 
But I think it's exactly what you'd expect from a Michael Mann Ferrari movie. Um, okay. I saw uh, Eileen with Anne Hathaway. I might talk about her later, too. Uh, good movie. Um, I always forget who, who is that actress who is in Anne the movie I just mentioned. Uh, no. <laughs> Not Anne Hathaway. Uh, Tom Thomason McKenzie. I, th- I think you know her. She was in Jojo Rabbit. She was in Last Night in Soho. I'm sure I'd have to look her up. She was Thomas in Old. McKenzie. She is a... Uh, I, th- I, I I like her. She She's a good actress. I think oh, she's yeah, really good in course. this. Of course. Yeah, of course. Anne Hathaway's really good. I think it's a good, like, pulpy, uh, uh, noir-ish type thriller. What was it called? Um, uh, Eileen. 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 Come on, Eileen. Yeah, exactly. They do not play that song in the movie. Missed opportunity. Uh, missed opportunity. Iron Claw I saw, which I highly oh, recommend. I'm so jealous. I'm so jealous. Uh, I'll talk about one performance in this movie later. Um, but overall, man, it, uh, if I, I almost want to say, if you don't know anything about it, go in cold. But I really do think you may need to read up on the true story before you go in, because it does really tackle... Some hard subjects. Some hard, hard subject matter. And it it does what it needs to do in regards to that subject matter and presenting it to you in, I think, um, in a way that will be both brutal, but by the end will we'll make you, you know, cry your eyes out. And there might be a bit of hope in there, too. So That's tough watch, nice. but performances are amazing throughout it's it's solid it's, so it's really good i've been to six i'm just flipping through my new movies here i think i went to six of these 50 movies in a theater um, six just six yeah very very low theater year i don't i don't it, it's not very feasible for me to go to them iron claw is gonna get me out i'm gonna i'm gonna move out of my house for that one when you do see it and I hope you see it in theaters or, or whenever. Like maybe it'll be out um, on digital sooner than later, uh, before the Oscars. I think you'll like it a lot. It, it, you know, I failed to mention. Yeah, it's a wrestling movie. Yeah, uh, amongst all the heartbreak and the tragedy in it, it's a wrestling movie, and I think it does the wrestling aspect of it pretty damn well. Um, I think few movies really uh, handle like what it means to be. A wrestler, um, both in and out of the ring. Um, so yeah, that, that aspect I think Siobhan, above all else, or and, and plus the other, I mean yeah, the other stuff too. What, I mean all of it. I think you'll the, the last one. Maybe is probably, uh, the wrestler. Or I mean, if you want to count uh, documentaries like that David Arquette movie we watched. Oh sure, I think that for sure also handles yeah. it pretty well. But yeah, but I think I guess feature films the wrestler. Um, I I saw uh, uh, C- Cassandro. I think that's the name of the movie this year. Do you know anything about that? I don't think I do. Okay, yeah, I saw, and uh, I probably wasn't too vocal about this because I'm kind of like in the middle. Oh um, yeah, I do this. know about this. Yeah, so I I do like it. Um, it stars Gail Garcia Bernal as the titular Cassandro. Uh, it's another based on true events wrestling film. And the wrestling in there, it, it's also very good. Uh, but I think Iron Claw is just, just, just a bit better. Because um, I think Iron Claw has the more dynamic or uh, has a lot more story to it than Cassandro. Which, it, it, Cassandro is a, a great watch. I recommend that too. Uh, I think, it, again, I think it handles the wrestling aspects of it pretty well too. Um, but it's hard to top something like Iron Claw. But yeah. Cassandro, Siobhan, put that on your radar because I think that's also a good watch. I'll consider it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'll mention one more because I gotta shut up. I want people to see this. Uh, it's it's it, it, if you're listening to this, the day it comes out. Hopefully, it's still in theaters. Godzilla minus one. Uh, it's the new Godzilla movie, the new uh, Japanese production. Uh, uh, the new Toho production of a Godzilla movie. It's great. I, I coming in, I kept hearing people say, "Yeah, it, it's it's good and good." And some people were saying it's the one of the best movies of the year. I go, "How good can it be?" Yeah, it's just that good. Uh, it's it, it's I think it's better than most of, if not all, the American. 
Godzilla movies. Um, I think I do like the 2014 Godzilla movie a, a tiny bit better. Um, but Godzilla minus one might just have the best human characters in any Godzilla movie. Um, it's 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 pretty damn amazing. I'll I'll leave it at that. It's it's emotional. Where you know, you, I didn't think I would cry at a Godzilla movie, but yet here we are. I teared up at the very end. Uh, and it has tremendous action, um, terrifying action for a Godzilla movie. I mean, I, I don't think since like the first movie, I felt just sort of like horrified, traumatized by the shaking in your you know, boots action. I was shaking in my boots. But yeah, it's it's. I mean, I don't know what else to say. Go see it. Uh, it's it's. I think it's a good big screen experience, and hopefully, more people see it, and the the run can extend longer. Because online, uh, apparently, there was rumors that it was going to have a short run, but I think because people are going out to see it because it's doing numbers, they're extending the run more than just a week. That it was I think initially going to run for. Um, but yeah, that's that. Really, this is the one movie that I've seen that I saw this week that really got me really excited. I was like, oh yes, Godzilla minus one. See that? You too, Siobhan. I think uh, you should see Godzilla <clears throat> minus one. I'm okay. Okay. Uh, all right. Is that all we've been watching for this past week? Certainly for me. All right. I think we can move on to the news. There, th- I, I I put up three items. We don't have to go through all these items, but I wanted to oh, shout out. God. <laughs> I wanted to shout out one item for sure. Uh, for me, it was essentially the start of this Oscar season for real. Uh, the New York Film Critics uh, Circle Awards. Yes, this is important. The NYFCC, uh, yes. as they call it. Uh, now, I should have said this up top. And this is every film critic in New York gets to vote on this. Pretty much. I should have said this on, uh, up top. So, 10 years ago, uh, this week, actually, t- 10 years ago, the day this comes out, Friday, uh, December 8th, um, I, flashback 10 years ago, I was, I'm on Twitter. I go, uh, oh, it's December again. Uh, it's uh, the, the Oscar season is ramping up yet again. Here come the New York Film Critics Circle Awards. Uh, let you know, and and they, as they do every year, they they live tweet because I'm assuming what happens is they're either all in a room or they're online together and they vote as a group, and then they they announce the awards on Twitter. So I thought to myself, ten years ago, why can't I do that? Why can't I pull people? And make my own awards thing, you know. Uh, the, uh, people on Twitter deserve a, 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 an awards body where they can vote, and and so began the Tweet Film Society. I started the I started the account on December eighth, two thousand thirteen. So exactly ten years ago today is when I started Tweet Film Society. Oh my god! Which eventually wow. became Talk Film Society because. I was <laughs> jealous of the New York Film Critics Circles <laughs> awards, and I go, I can do that. <laughs> so yeah. why don't I get to vote? <laughs> I want to vote. Um, and then I well, screw I, you guys. I'm going to do my own. Yeah, exactly. And that that's what I did with the Talk Film Society awards, uh, or the, back then it was the Tweet Film Society awards. Uh, I changed it from Tweet Film Society to Talk Film Society. Uh, I think. Smartly, it was a smart move on my you part. You saw it coming. You saw yeah. that it wouldn't be called Twitter I, anymore yeah. in ten years. I mean, imagine if I stuck with that name. Imagine, imagine if it was still called Tweet Film Society. <laughs> we would not be anywhere near as successful as we. Are. <laughs> successful is a strong word. Uh, all right. So <laughs> this year's we would probably be more successful. I think that's maybe a hookier thing. <laughs> If we were still called Tweet place, Film Society, yeah, way. no, yeah. no way. We are prestigious, if not successful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so that was ten years ago. Uh, so thank you, New York Film Critics Circle uh, Awards, for basically creating Talk Film Society. What were their winners this year, though? Let's look back. I don't know. I'll tell you, Siobhan. All right. What was their best picture winner? We'll hear that later. We well, got to get to the smaller awards first. Yeah, here are the smaller awards. But only do the noteworthy ones. Do we oh, have to yeah. do them all? No, I'm not going to do them all. Uh, I'll just do the notable ones. Cinematography. Above the line. 
above <laughs> no let's do some below the line too uh cinematography oppenheimer uh best mm. best animated film the boy and the heron uh, which i'm mm. gonna see next week i'm excited about that are you are you excited so about the miyazaki the right yeah miyazaki are you excited about the new miyazaki I, uh, look i i uh just say no i have enjoyed all of no <laughs> Yeah, Look, okay. Am I gonna see it? No. You're not gonna <laughs> <laughs> flat out. No, I'm not gonna watch it. There's no. Am I? Am I not excited for it? No. But like, like you're not gonna see. Am it. I gonna watch it? No. It's realistically not gonna happen. So okay. So yeah. Just say no next time. Just don't give me that. Just say just no, say. kids. That's what we're here to say. <laughs> just say no to the boy and the heron. Uh, best screenplay, May December. I'm very serious about the Siobhan. I think it's on Netflix. I, I, I can't remember if we, if we had this conversation on or off mic, but I think you have Netflix. Uh, I have Netflix. I, 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 I say you should watch this. I'm not, I, I did not know that this was already released on Netflix until like Monday. Okay. I would have watched it over the weekend if I knew it was there. So maybe next week we'll hear Siobhan's words on it, but I'll I'll say some words. Maybe, on it later. maybe, maybe May December. Maybe. May may be December. May may definitely may be December. Best supporting actress Divine Joy Randolph for the Holdovers. What's all this about? What's this Holdovers business? Oh, oh wait, is that Alexander Payne? It is Alexander Payne. I'm not watching that. Okay. <laughs> I I I knew we were gonna bring this up. Uh. It's it, we, this is best supporting actress. I am going to bring her up. Should we talk about the movie now, or should we just talk about the movie later? I don't know. Why don't we talk about the movie later? Best supporting actor Charles Melton for May December. Now I want to highlight this, and and hey, uh, prognosticators, write this down. So I think this was the turning point for the best supporting actor race. Now, if you if you would ask me, and people have asked me. They go, Marcelo, uh, who would you have said was going to win Best Supporting Actor before the New York Film Critics Circle Awards? Um, RDJ. Yeah. For Best Supporting Actor Oscars, RDJ. Robert Downey Jr. in the bag. But um, I, I also think uh, Charles Melton, he, he won this award. And he also won, I believe, the the Gotham Awards. I think that also happened this week. Um, he's been getting some heat so I, I think he's in the running now. Will he beat RDJ? Maybe. I don't know. I, I you know, I, I'm I'm happy though, because I think Melton in May December is fantastic. It's I think it's a great performance. So I'm glad it's at least getting recognized. I think he'll for sure get a nomination for Best Supporting Actor. Charles Melton. Okay. Best actress, Lily Gladstone, Killers of the Fire Moon. Great. She's my pick. For the Oscars. Uh, best actor, Franz Rogowski for Passages. Uh, good movie. I like him in that movie. Passages. Solid. Uh, best director. Here we go. Last two. Best director, Nolan Oppenheimer. Best film, Killers of the Flower Moon. Siobhan, your thoughts? Yeah, I, it's interesting. I, I, you know, I, I am... I said earlier that I'm kind of like tuned out of this uh, race and it's because I don't, these movies that I'm hearing just do not necessarily feel like your typical award season movies or like, or ones that like it, nothing about this year feels like I've been inundated with the movies that are going to win throughout the year like I normally have, or especially the last, like, three months, like, what usually happens, which is when, like, November, uh, November, December starts the, like, push, you know? I don't yeah. know what to say. I, I am surprised that the movies that I've heard of, like, Oppenheimer and Killers of the Flower Moon are the ones that are actually going to win. Like, like uh, you, that just doesn't seem to be how it usually happens. Usually it's like some random drama that comes out of nowhere in December that is like the one that's like everybody decides that one wins. Can we go back a year? I mean, why don't we talk? Well, brief- maybe I'm an asshole. I don't know. No, 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 no. I, 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 see, I see what you're saying. And that's normally the case. 
But I think last year was a weird situation too, where everything everywhere ended up being the front runner. But I have, I, but I had, I had been hearing about everything everywhere all at once the entire year, right? Like since that movie had come out, and I had been hearing from everybody all the time about that movie, and I, there's some disconnect. Like I believed everything everywhere. I didn't necessarily believe in killers or Barbie or Oppenheimer for some reason. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. Uh, is it because you just don't think they're, is it, is it because you don't think they're like Oscar contenders or in, in your book, they're not like sold as Oscar contenders. Is. I don't know what it is. I really, I really, I cannot articulate it, but it's just like, this feels so weird to me this year. Interesting. So this is going to be the theme for this season. I'm just going to dig into the mind of Siobhan and sort of see if, you know, where this is coming from or if there's some, or if there's some sort of psychological problem in your brain that you need like a CAT scan for, uh, either way, we'll figure it out. Um, British independent awards. They handed those out. I'm not going to read through that list. I'll just say all of us strangers sweeps with seven wins, including best film. All of us strangers starring Andrew Scott and Paul there, Mescal. There we go. This is this is the film. All, what is this? <laughs> this this All is the type of, of thing I think strangers. will come out of nowhere. <laughs> or Saltburn. I think Saltburn feels more like no. like the type of movie that's like, oh, there's something called Saltburn out, and that's going to be okay. Martin Scorsese and Christopher Nolan. I see. I, I see what you're saying. So. <laughs> So there has to be like, or or you think there has to be a movie that just comes out of nowhere and goes, hey, this, like, you know what it was for me last year that during the awards ceremony, I was like, what the fuck's going on? Where, all why? Quiet. Yeah, it was all quiet yeah. on the Western fronts. That was the ruiner yeah. for me. Um, but I haven't seen all of us strangers. I, I want to see it. I, I like Andrew Scott and, and Paul Mescal. Um, uh, Paul Mescal, former nominee. Former nominee, past nominee for um, that one movie I saw and I liked and I cannot remember the name of and I don't know why I just brought this After up. Sun. After Sun, thank you. Um, but yeah, all of the strangers. Uh, will it be a contender for the Oscars? Maybe. I mean, it's getting a lot of heat. All right. So that's the, hey, any other news? Any other news you wanna you wanna talk about, Siobhan? I mean, no. Okay. <laughs> uh, I want to ask you though. Did you see the? Have you seen the Palm Dior winner, Anatomy of a Fall? Yes, I have. Um, why do you ask? What do you think? What do you think about that? It's really good. It's solid. I, I want to see it. I want to see it really bad. Uh, I recommend you do. Do you see that getting any play? I do. I actually don't know if it's going to be up for best international film. It might get like a nomination for screenplay, and maybe the lead actress will get a nomination too. But I think it's it's solid. I think it's definitely put that. Yeah, if it's not already on your list, Siobhan, put that on your list. I, it, I think it's definitely worth a watch. Mm-hmm. Anatomy mm-hmm. of a Fall. I do really want to see it. Yeah, it's good. Unfortunately, not available anywhere. Not even to buy. <sighs> well, I, I think it's still doing its like awards theatrical run. I know. I know. Get, yeah. get, wrap that up. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. All right Let fine. me watch the movie. Okay. Uh, you know, if 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 we end up being the top uh, podcast uh, on Apple Podcast and Spotify, if we're like the number one rated podcast. Yeah, maybe we can get award screeners. Imagine that. Imagine if you know all the studios. Imagine if like Neon, and A twenty four, and Searchlight sent you DVDs to watch. Siobhan. Oh, that would be a dream. I, I've I've always thought about that. I would love. I would love it. I would love it. So you, you, you hear that, uh, uh, PR people, uh, studios out there? I know you're listening. Send us send us the screeners, and we'll talk about these movies more in depth. Okay. Or send them to me. Marcelo's seen all these movies. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's clarify. I've seen all these. I don't give a shit. Don't send me your junk. Send, send all that junk to Siobhan. Thank you. Yeah. Best Supporting Actress. That's the theme. That's the subject of this episode. Yeah. Where do, where do, we, where do we start first, Marcelo? Where do, we start? do we start with our past pick? Or do we start with our new picks? Where, what, where do we do? Let's, let's go to the past. Let's go back. Dive back into the year that was 1999. 1999. Uh, how old are you in 1999, Siobhan? Were you uh, not born yet? Four years old. Four years old. 
I'm not going to reveal how old I was. I'll just say I was older than four, maybe five. Um, five or five, yeah, probably five or six. Probably five or six. So 1999. Oh, so we knew we were going to do Best Supporting Actress uh, this episode, and we're going to reveal our picks for our favorites of the year so far. Right. I mean, promise. you've got that list ready. I've got my list ready. Yes. Our best supporting actress uh, picks for the year. We'll also talk about you know, predictions for the Oscars. Uh, we'll get all that. Got the gold derby game to play. Gold derby. That's Maybe. coming up. Uh, yeah, I got that. I, <laughs> hey, buddy, I got that lined up. Um, but we, we decided let's talk about something more. Let's go back and watch a movie that won the award for best supporting actress. Um, I'm going to give the credit to you, Siobhan, because I think you just threw out like three suggestions and I go, okay, yeah. go interrupt it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it, it ended up being a good pick. I'll say, um, now let's see, I'm going to pull up the 72nd Academy Awards honoring the films released in 1999. Okay. Let's start there. All right. Do uh, we, I think we mentioned it uh, before? Um, the year nineteen ninety nine. The Oscars. Siobhan, do you know what won the Best Picture Oscar this year? Best Picture Oscar nineteen ninety nine. The this is right before Gladiator. I know that. Yeah, yeah. Gladiator um, was two thousand. The English Patient. No, that was like 19... Shakespeare in Love. No. Um, no, that was the year before. Shakespeare in Love was 98, I think. Uh, uh, so I've got I've got the sandwich. I've got the sandwich. You got the, I think English Patient was like 96, so you're close. But I got I got to find the meat. Um Titanic. That was 97. You're going back. Okay. Man, I I am all around this. <laughs> um Yeah, I think English Patient was 96, Titanic 97. Uh, Shakespeare in Love, 98. Are, are, are you saying this one's a little underwhelming, especially compared to those? Absolutely. Oh, yeah, go ahead. The, that Robin Williams one? Uh, the, where he's standing on all the desks? <laughs> no, not that one. Not, um, uh, uh, it's not Good Will Hunting. It's not, uh, <sighs> Cider House. No, it's not it. What Cider is that? House rules. What is that one where he stands on desks? It's, uh, it's one I haven't seen, by the oh, way. Oh, Captain, my Captain. Uh, this is bad podcasting. Let's just skip this that. Sucks. <laughs> it's not that. So, nineteen ninety nine. Um, no, I'm I'm all around it. I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it. Okay, I'm gonna read you the nominees, and you're gonna tell me who won out of these nominees. Your nominees for best picture in nineteen ninety nine are the Sixth Sense, the Insider, the Green Mile, the Cider House Rules, American Beauty. American Beauty. Yeah, that one best picture. <laughs> yeah, American Beauty won a best picture that year. Uh, okay. Yeah. Easy, okay. Or, uh, easy to blank out of your memory. Exactly. Because. Don't want to think about it. One of the most underwhelming films to ever win best picture, maybe. Not, not even underwhelming, uh, embarrassing. Embar- yeah, embarrassing. It's, it's a is the terrible movie. Yeah, no. Um, I've seen Green Mile. I like that movie a lot. The Insider, uh, speaking of Michael Mann, uh, great film. The Sixth Sense. For sure, the most uh, 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 culturally important movie on this list. Uh, it, it made a huge cultural impact. Cider House. Did I mention Cider House Rules? I've not seen that. Um, but know. American Beauty. Oh boy. And also in the year 1999. Uh, I mean, The Matrix wasn't nominated. Magnolia wasn't nominated. You have so many yeah, other great movies up. not that nominated for Best up. Picture. So wild Best Picture win for American Beauty. Uh, but we're not talking best picture. We're talking best supporting actress. I get it. It's very of the time. I'm not even surprised that it won. I'm just like, yeah, it's it's just like a bad, bad, bad movie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't think worth revisiting. I did revisit it not too long ago, just a few years ago. I think right before the Kevin Spacey news. Um, and I was yeah, still... Good, good cover. Good cover. <laughs> No, I saw it the night it happened, the night the news broke. I go, oh, I got to see this before it goes bad. <laughs> um, this is my last chance. <laughs> I'm going to log it in Letterbox and just lie and say I watched it the day before. <laughs> um, it's It does not hold up, I don't think. Um, 
Uh, okay, but quickly going through the, the bigger categories this year. Sam Mendes won Best Director for American Beauty. Uh, Hilary Swank won for Boys Don't Cry, Best Actress. Uh, Kevin Spacey won Best Actor for American Beauty. Uh, Best Supporting Actor, Michael Caine won for The Cider House Rules. We're talking Best Supporting Actress. Let's look at the nominees. Uh, Chloe Sevigny for Boys Don't mm-hmm. Cry. Samantha Morton for Sweet and Low Down. Which I think is a Woody Allen movie, right? Is uh, it? Uh, I'll do a quick search. Yes, it is. Uh, Catherine Keener for Being John Malkovich. Tony Collette for The Sixth Sense. And Siobhan, who won that year? Our winner that year, uh, a young actress uh, uh, soon to blow up away at large after this win. Uh, Angelina Jolie for Girl Interrupted. Yeah, as Lisa Rowe. All right. You want to get um, into it? Angelina Jolie, yeah. Girl Interrupted, the movie we watched so, for this episode? Um, I threw this one out there as a suggestion. I think also with another Woody Allen movie. <laughs> uh, Vicky Christina Barcelona, without even thinking it was a Woody Allen movie. Yeah. I was just like, I saw Penelope Cruz. I was like, oh, yeah, Penelope Cruz. Let's talk about her. I but, Hey, uh, I, I, I know we would have had to talk about Woody Allen, but I do like I do like her in that movie a lot. Penelope mm-hmm. Cruz in Vicky Cristina Barcelona, but this is a, the better pick because we don't have to talk about Woody Allen. Yeah, well, I mean, in a, in a here in a second, I will. But <laughs> uh, yeah, I've seen Boys Don't Cry. I've seen most of Being John Malkovich. I have never seen Sixth Sense and Sweet and Lowdown. I had never even heard of. And then I was I was going through and like my plan for these as we're going to keep doing them every week is I want to watch as many of these movies as I can. And unfortunately, the only movie that uh, was available other than Girl Interrupted was Sweet and Lowdown. And I ended up just choosing to go with Saint Omer instead as my like my movie watching time. I was I was sick over this weekend, didn't have much time. I thought it better to watch like a really depressing uh, a courtroom drama about a woman who murdered her daughter, yeah, baby daughter, instead of uh, whatever Woody Allen's. Uh, sweet bullshit uh twee dog shit uh but i was excited to see girl interrupted mostly because I, I had never seen girl interrupted it's very it was high up on my watch list for like things that like it's weird that i haven't seen this movie and yeah i uh am very happy i watched it uh i think it's quite a good film it's, yeah. it's more hollywood than i was expecting it to be i guess um but and I saw the budget was like forty million dollars or something, and I was kind Jesus of blown Christ. away by that. Yeah, right. Where'd that money go? <laughs> I'm, I, well, I, I'll say I. Th- this was also a first time watch for me. This was always on my radar. Um, this was back when I was watching the Oscars. Um, I think I mentioned this last season. I started watching the Oscars the year Titanic uh, won all the awards that year. I think in ninety eight is when that, when that ceremony happened after that i've seen every pretty much every oscars live since then and i watched this oscars and i was like oh angie jolie girl interrupted uh always on my radar now having seen it i'm like yeah i'm glad i crossed that off uh some of it doesn't work for me but still i think it's a good pick for best supporting actress it's a best supporting actress and just like performances overall yeah, like across the board, everybody's phenomenal. Oh, I was gonna uh, say, yeah, I, that forty million. I hope it went into the cast pocket because what a cast! Like of yeah. great actresses and and soon to be great actresses uh, who have like who had like long careers after this. I mean, seeing Elizabeth Moss in here that's and a surprise, yeah, yeah, that's a surprise. Uh, the late great Brittany Murphy. Brittany I forgot Murphy. she was in this. I love Claire Duvall. Claire Duvall, uh, uh, the queen. And, and also a, the, a jump scare of a Jared Leto being in this. <laughs> That's did interesting, it? right? Terrifying. <laughs> I did not like know who was in this. Kind of pervy character. <laughs> with, with a terrible beard, those, those, yeah. ter- those horrifying blue eyes of his. A character that I don't even really understand. Like, why was he there? What did he serve? I don't they could, know. They could have easily cut him out. Yeah. This, I, don't you know, know, uh, I don't know what his character did other than give Winona Ryder, I guess, like something. 
Yeah. Well, you know, we should talk about the plot of this movie if for anybody who hasn't seen this. It's so, about a girl who gets interrupted. Yeah. Uh, a girl interrupted. What is it? This podcast? Every time I tell Siobhan to shut up? Uh, g- uh, g- <laughs> I was, I was, I was well, uh, a girl, please don't interrupt this movie. I liked it. <laughs> Girl interrupted. More like I had to pause this movie and go see Ferrari, and then come back and watch the rest of it. <laughs> um, it's only uh, two hours and uh, seven minutes. It's not that long. You know, it could have been cut down. Um, okay, nineteen sixty-seven. Uh, and a- I'm reading this from the Wikipedia. Uh, New England. Uh, an aimless eighteen-year-old uh, Suzanne, played by Winona Ryder. Winona Ryder has a nervous breakdown. And overdoses on aspirin and alcohol. Uh, against her wishes, she's checked into Claymore, a local psychiatric hospital. Uh, in the war, she befriends uh, all these characters, uh, played by, like we said, Elizabeth Moss, Brittany Murphy, Claire Duvall, um, and of course, Angelina Jolie. Um, and we, uh, uh, hey, uh, uh, Whoopi Goldberg also shows up um, as okay. uh, I think as a nurse. Uh, Vanessa Redgrave plays like the, the 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 head of this hospital. What a cast! Uh, Jeffrey Tambor, the terrible person, he also shows up as a terrible person. Um, uh, yeah, the, hell of a cast. Uh, that's the plot. Let's get into it. Okay, so. I- Siobhan, I, uh, I yeah. found a thought while you were talking. The, the way that mental hospitals are portrayed in this film are... I, I was surprised by it. I was thinking it would be another kind of like... Uh, or worried that it would be another type of like horror drama, you know, set in like a, an evil place. Like an insane um, directed by Steven Soderbergh. Like years an insane. Later. Or yeah. like, I don't know if you've seen the movie Francis, but, uh, I don't think like so. that, that, I think that's also in the sixties. It's about a woman who went undercover at a uh, mental hospital and oh. like discovered all these horrible things they were doing to patients and stuff. Francis. And like, yeah, it's certainly not a pleasant place, but it's not like, it feels like a more realistic depiction of what a mental health hospital is like. Yeah. Or at least like your average mental hospital, uh, what barring the truly terrible ones that I, that I guarantee do exist. Yeah. It, it definitely felt more real. Um, I should have looked into, um, uh, that's more, true, right? It's a true story. Yeah, that's what I was just going to look up. So yeah, it says here, Girl Interrupted is based on the best-selling 1993 memoir by uh, Suzanne uh, Kaysen. So yeah, uh, it is based on her uh, true life. Yeah, nonfiction narrative. I looked up the definition of memoir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> but it, it does it does feel real. It does feel like somebody lived through this experience. You know what... I think the the one aspect I I did really like love about this movie is um, love is a strong word because it did freak me out how they captured this. But in the beginning, when like we see uh, Winona Ryder's character and like it starts in media res, like just with her and her friends, like in a basement. And then it jumps to, you know, the past and then back to the future, then the past and then she's talking to her, uh, like, uh, a psychiatrist or an analyst, basically saying, it's "Like, yeah, I have these, like, I'm my my mind is jumping around in time, and that the that editing of like going back and forth in the narrative it captured that I think pretty well, and it it did sort of like get me into the movie, um, like a a because later she is um, diagnosed as a uh, having borderline personality disorder." Um, but sort of conveying that on film, I think I think is easy to digest for anyone coming in having like really no knowledge of what that would be, right? Does that make sense, Siobhan? Without, yeah, yeah, it is, and without being insensitive, exactly. It's, yeah, uh, yeah, it, it's approachable without being alienating. I think the movie could have used a little bit more of that type of motif, like how you were talking about. So I guess some interesting visual thing going on. Yeah. Uh, cause it is a lot of, uh, white, uh, sterile rooms and, but, but, but like what liven up these really horrible, horribly drab locations are, uh, are the girls and their, their interplay and their, their, their fun. Like they're, uh, they're, they're catty and bitchy and 
make jokes with each other and like playing crafts and stuff and watching TV or whatever. They watch the assassination of is it JFK? Uh, on the TV? Um, MLK. Martin Luther King. MLK. They yeah. watch MLK on the TV. Like it's uh there's lots of stuff like that that like that like the, 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 the again, it's the performances that make this movie really watchable. Yeah. And, and uh, hey, we didn't mention this, directed by James Mangold himself. Yes, I was shocked. I was shocked when I read that. Yeah, me too. This guy directed The Wolverine. Yeah, this guy directed 310 to Yuma. This guy directed uh, Logan. This guy directed Ford v. Ferrari. Yes. This guy directed Indiana Jones and the Doll of Destiny. Fuck, yeah, he did. I forgot about that. What a weird career this guy's had. He directed Copland. Walk the line. Copland. Walk the line. Identity. <laughs> Night and day. <coughs> oh, weird dude. Weird dude. What's his deal? I don't know. And okay. What is he cooking? <laughs> uh, 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 not a good Indiana Jones movie, uh, if you ask me. I was no, not a fan of that movie. I'm, I haven't seen it. Okay. Um, you might like it. I, I just am not a fan of it uh, for reasons that I won't get into. Uh, let's just say that I hope it doesn't get a best visual effects Oscar nomination. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Earlier you were trying to say, or I think you were saying this, like that the beginning where the editing is, uh, um, well done and trying to get into the mind of this character as it progresses, it becomes less and less like visually pleasing. <laughs> I it's, it's weird to think James Mangold directed this because I normally like his movies, I think Logan is really good. Ford vs. Ferrari is well shot. But it, to me, this is just a, an example of like what I think Mangold is. He's just a workman director. He's just like sort of a, not in a bad way. He's just like a Ron Howard type. Doesn't yeah. have really a distinct style. He can just dive into whatever genre he wants and just make it what it is. So to me, this movie doesn't really stand out other than the editing in the beginning. It doesn't stand out like visually or... Other than the performances, it's it's a performance driven piece. Without that, I think it'd be very and plain, lackluster. Let's let's talk about. Uh, I mean, the two main performances here we have to talk about, and Winona Ryder. We have to talk about. Um, I think she's uh, phenomenal. This is one yeah. of my favorite Winona Ryder roles I've ever seen. Really good. Um, I think I read something that she like personally optioned the movie, like bought oh. the rights to the movie. Or to to the to the memoir, and was like fighting for years to get it made. So, so she was like very clearly passionate about the movie, and that comes through. Yeah, um, and it's a, it's an understated performance, I think, in a lot of ways. Yeah, uh, she lets everybody else shine. I think in a way that's like cool. Yeah, um, and one of those people that she lets shine is uh, the young Angelina Jolie. Angelina Jolie, daughter of John Voight. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Let's never forget it. Uh, <laughs> uh, former, former wife of uh, uh, Billy Bob Thornton. Yes. Now I I I um, should have uh, uh, gone through the, the the old video of of this awards ceremony because I do remember distinctly the the Billy Bob Thornton stuff. The, and her on the red carpet and the, the the blood in the vials and all the weird stuff that was happening on the red carpet. I don't remember if this was happening when she won the Oscar. It might have happened after. It feels like it was happening around this time. Yeah. yeah maybe maybe like early 2000s. Because at, at one point, didn't she... And I'm saying all of this, just, it happened. Like <laughs> This all happened on the red carpet. I remember the coverage of it being like... Look at the antics of Angelina Jolie. First, she's with Billy Bob Thornton. They're doing weird stuff on the red carpet. Then I think at one point she kisses her brother. Uh, I don't remember when that happened, but that was also something that happened. I don't know. I maybe it's best we don't dive into that because I have. Well she, well, she was she was a wild child as she plays in the film Girl in Her. <laughs> but <She's, laughs> the most important thing to remember is she, now she's like. You know, she's she's gone past that. She's she's gone through all that. She's now uh, uh, a a I think a uh, well. I I hope she's a well-adjusted adult now. <laughs> I mean, well, I I I just refreshed Twitter, 
And I got uh, a headline saying, Angelina Jolie says, I wouldn't be an actress today and plans to leave Los Angeles. Hollywood is not a healthy place. So, Wait, look, so this, is, uh, this is new? This is breaking news? This is brand new, yes. She's leaving Hollywood? Apparently. Wow. Okay. So wait, does that mean she's going to not be an actress anymore? Uh, she's at least moving. Wow. Breaking she news. Says she kind of maybe, maybe regrets her being an actress or like says like today, she just would not want to start out. Now I regret talking about it as much as I have, but I will say she's gone through some troubled times, especially now as, a, as an adult, like with her, uh, former marriages or marriage, uh, when especially, um, but I like her. I do. I like her as a person, like who, like who she's become. So I'm hoping, you know, I'm hoping for the best for her. Um, but let's talk about her in this movie. Uh, she's good in the movie, but I feel, I don't know. I feel like I've, I've seen her better in other movies and maybe this is too, I hate to say this, especially with you being on the line, Siobhan. <laughs> I'm regret, I'm going to regret saying this. It feels too, and I think the movie also mentions at the very end that she's this, like, she's like the villain. She's Joker-esque in her villainy, Angelina Jolie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's a maybe a bit over the top, um, but I don't, I'm happy she won the Oscar. Uh, I, uh, I don't, I, I don't think she's necessarily... Ah, uh, I, I, I don't one hundred percent see her that way. I think she's just like another person that wants out, and like I, I know it's like she, she's a little bit more, uh, um, what's the word? Psych, 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 psych not psychotic. Uh, a, a sociopath. Sociopath. She's yeah. she's kind of a sociopath. I don't know. It, it's just like everybody is in there for one reason or another. And I mean, no, I, I say all that, but then I, I will say. At the at the very end, I guess whatever this this movie's been out for twenty four years now, um, and no. I do I do feel bad for her. At the I end do where she gets caught back and well taken back into the system. That's the thing that I was going to say at the very end is is that where she injects herself with something like she she basically wants to harm herself, and she's at her lowest. You see her at her lowest. And that's when I felt really bad. Yeah, like you said, I think that's what really th- uh, uh, spoke to me. And I thought, okay, for most of the running time, she felt like it's a, all a mask, you know. Yeah, it's, she, it's yeah. She she it she, it felt like she was a two dimensional character for the longest time. And I, I guess my me saying she's Joker esque, maybe maybe this is the point. She's supposed to seem like you know a villain, a two dimensional villain. And then at the very end, like her stone-faced, crying, tears in her eyes, just at her lowest, I really felt for her. And I think, oh yeah, that is what I want in this performance. Or that's what I wanted. That's just just something more, like a a more three-dimensional character. But yeah. There there was a part of me (laughs) that was thinking, oh, is she going to end up not being real? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I thought that too. <laughs> I, I had that thought cross my mind. Yeah, because it, 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 it in, in a in a worse movie, uh, in a worse movie, that's that that's the twist. Hey, it was nineteen ninety nine. It was it was uh yeah, could have happened. It was Six on sense. Uh, uh, and also uh, Fight Club. Fight Club, yeah, yeah. That wasn't nominated for anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think famously it bombed at the box office and yeah, it was did. very divisive with critics. Um, not a not a single nomination for a Fight Club. Why not? Why not get a Helena Bonham Carter in here <laughs> with her terrible American accent? I don't know. Oh come on, she, her American accent. Hey, are we going to argue about this? I love Helena Bonham Carter. Uh, Helena Bonham Carter, fantastic actress. Not the best American accent in Fight okay, Club. You know what? It's been a while since I've watched the film. Uh, Watch it again. I certainly have never noticed it. Watch it again. I'll, I'll keep You'll notice. Mind. You'll notice. Uh, I, w- I want to shout out because I think this was an excellent choice on your part, Siobhan, uh, for Best Supporting Actress uh, winning film because there are a lot of great supporting actresses in this movie. And I've always been a fan of Brittany Murphy. I think she's great in this. I also think Elizabeth Moss is very good. Uh, Clay Duvall, basically uh, every single supporting actress in this movie is very good. Um, Whoopi Goldberg, very good. I just love these ensemble movies with all 
it was you know the best supporting actresses in the business at the time just filling up the screen i love it i, I i'm a fan of this movie even though I have, I, have, I have problems with it i think it it becomes a bit too the ending kind of falls flat for me uh not to spoil it but yeah she gets out when a writer Winona Ryder's character leaves the the hospital, and you're kind of Lord. You're it, the ending is sort of like oh, and then they all lived happily ever after. They got out. Everybody, everything's fine. I'm I'm out of there. All right, bye. Other than that, I think the the movie is well made. Siobhan, what do you think? We are in agreement. We like the film. We like, <laughs> we like it the film. The girl interrupted. Yeah. Uh, only one. It only won one Oscar, and it was only nominated for one Oscar for Best Supporting Actress. Hopefully I remember this for the next episode and for the next movie we watch, but uh, if you were going to nominate it for any other award, Siobhan, what would it be? Any other category? Winona Ryder. Yeah, Winona Ryder, Best Actress. I agree. I was I was also thinking maybe screenplay. So I, I, did, I did like their banter and stuff like I, yeah. it's well written you know what i i do like the screenplay i, I like the screenplay especially in the beginning <laughs> like the editing stuff i would have nominated for this i would have nominated this for best editing how about that sure i was a fan of that let's look at what won for best screenplay um adapted the cider house uh, rules cider house rules yes I- <laughs> is that actually it it won yeah best supporting <laughs> sorry best adapted that screenplay. was totally a guess <clears throat> yeah uh also nominated Election, The Green Mile, The Insider, The Talented Mr. Ripley. Wow. Election is uh, adapted? Yeah. Election was based on a book. Alexa- Alexander Payne, who we'll talk about later. Um, unfortunately. Unfortunately, yes. Uh, best editing. I want to look up who won that. Oh, of course. No beating this. You want to take a guess what won best film editing in 1999, Siobhan? Oh... Uh... No. Okay. The Matrix won for best. Wow. Film yeah. Okay. Good. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Also nominated American Beauty, which it, the editing in that what the what what what? No, oh, there's no editing in American Beauty. It's just very how blue. tastefully they cut away from Chris Cooper blowing his brains out. Whatever. The Insider uh, that deserved it. I think. Yeah. From my memory, I haven't seen it in a while. The Sixth Sense. Uh, yeah. The Cider House Rules best editing. What's going on here? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, I think Girl Interrupted has better editing than some of those movies. All right. Girl Interrupted. You've been watched. Um, best Supporting Actress from 1999. You've just been watched. <laughs> You've just been watched. All right. Next topic. Our picks. Are we, are we doing this now? Our picks for Best Supporting Actress of this year. Uh, our, our personal favorites. Yes, of 2023. Yes. Uh, all right, our picks. How do we do this? Do we go back and forth? Or do, I, do I just say mine and then you say yours? I was I was wondering about that. Uh, I, I think we should go number five back and forth. I think we should go my five, your five, or whatever. I don't think that's how we did it, but we'll, we'll do it that way. I don't think it was, but I like that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, Siobhan, you go first. Okay. My five is Sasha Lane in How to Blow Up a Pipeline. Oh. I, uh, did... I don't think we are, did we talk about that on on Mike that movie we might not we might have we might not have I'm not sure I I, um, I might have mentioned it I think I did go on a rant about how like I watched it and I was like kind of like thinking oh it's too slick to be you know a, a, you know an anti establishment movie and then I go out yeah. and see a standee of a of an oil drum yes. in the lobby like that that does make me sick. Yeah. <laughs> that idea that 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 image that you bring to my head that's like i fucking hate that so much yeah but look i think i think this movie performance wise is off the charts i think this like if there's a best ensemble award i very realistically could give it to how to blow up a pipeline um, I think it lives and dies on all of its performances and everybody's interplay with each other um i i choose sasha lane Look, it's been a while. It's been a couple months since I watched it. I'm sorry. I don't remember much. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> but I just do remember her being very good in it. Yeah. Um, all right, that's your number five. Yeah. My number five is, and we'll talk about it here. We'll get into it. It's Dicey, Divine Joy Randolph for The Holdovers. 
Yeah, go ahead. She seems to be the frontliner at this point. Yeah, she is the frontliner. Front runner. Uh, front runner. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, no, okay. Listen. The Alex- flatliner. <laughs> uh, Alexander Payne. Uh, yes. The, 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 is it? Is controversy the right word? Is is named by Rose McGowan like right from the beginning? Yeah. Now, it's it's. Uh, I I I know how you feel about it, Siobhan. You're like no, Alexander Payne, no, right? I'm willing to cut him out. I I, I do look. I'm, I'm gonna. I'll be fully honest. Like I like a lot of the man's work. I, I the, the the Descendants is probably my favorite. But like I. I, if I went through and probably named all of his films, that I, I probably like every single one of them except for whatever that Jason Sudeikis tiny one was, Downsizing. T- Jason, and I also don't think Jason Sudeikis... Wait, he was in that? I, I, yes. I know that as the Matt Damon vehicle. Is it Matt Damon? Oh, never mind. But maybe Sudeikis uh, is in it too, I don't know. For some reason, I, I feel... Uh, for some reason, I see Jason Sudeikis on that poster. But <laughs> it's Matt Damon. It's Matt Damon. <laughs> Okay, yeah, okay. You know what? I'm going to go through it. I'm just going to go through it. Own up to everything. Uh, downsizing, I thought, uh, was kind of embarrassing. Uh, but am I going to say that I hated it? No. Nebraska, uh, quite good. The Descendants loved it. Uh, 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 About Schmidt, I, I, that, was a, that was a movie I watched a lot as a kid. I liked it. Uh, Election, I think, is a phenomenal movie. So, look, I've seen everything of his... Except for the holdovers and sideways, I haven't seen sideways, which is and like uh, I am a fan of the guy. Yeah, um, but yeah, I I think I'm willing to cut him out. Yeah, and this is uh, one on of those basis of being a rapist. Yeah, this is one of those difficult things where it's difficult for me to cut out. Let's just say the performance in the holdovers because I think everybody in the holdovers performance wise is amazing. Uh, uh, going down that list of um, Paul Giamatti, uh, Divine Joy. Uh, I'm going to look at who else is in it because I forgot his name. Uh, Dominic Sessa. I think the kid who, the kid in that movie. Um, they're all amazing. And I, to, to get it, I don't want to fully get into the, 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 the case, the accusation, but just look it up, folks. Rose McGowan Alexander Payne. Um, I don't. I. It's difficult. It is, and I am a fan of the movie, but I am not a fan of the man himself. And also, it's it's. It never went. In, it never went. And not that this is an excuse, but it never went to like trial or anything. There wasn't like a case filed because I think those are easier for it's, me to say. It's at, also at, not. It's also yeah. Those are easier to quit off, but like it's also but like it's also not one that like really broke mainstream it's also not it's not like uh uh who's the answer answer damn director um, oh yeah I, I was gonna bring up david or russell because that one is easier to define as like oh yeah like that one i think a police report was filed and he's known to be an asshole on set to people you know that's yeah. more de- definitive of like oh that guy is terrible truly and it, terrible and it made waves yeah. you know and i think that does change people's perception of it like michael fassbender didn't really make waves and now i think we're all accepting him as the killer you know yeah yeah um but yeah i guess that's another reason why this yeah he wasn't fully um kicked out of hollywood alexander payne because it did not make waves like the other ones did um and also david o russell wasn't kicked out of hollywood either he's still hanging around apparently he (sighs) Fuck, uh, yeah. Apparently he he, uh, he and uh, he was hosting a Q and A with Michael Mann for a Ferrari screening. David O'Russell. So Jesus O'Russell's still hanging around. It's terrible. These people are terrible. Um, but I don't know. It, again, it's tricky. We all draw. I love that wacky world of Hollywood, right, folks? <laughs> Go watch Babylon, and you know what we're talking about. <laughs> um, but I do. Okay, getting back to the list. I t- <laughs> Jesus Christ, Divine Joy Randolph exceptional in the holdovers um and it, it, it as much as i like paul giamatti in the holdovers as much as i like that kid in the holdovers like the only other time i think i'll mention the holdovers is maybe screenplay and that's it um 
but we'll see how how that goes with the, with the Oscars, with the Academy Awards. Will Alexander be Payne? Will Alexander Payne be nominated for an Oscar this year? Will Alexander be in pain? <laughs> <laughs> we shall see, folks. We're keeping an eye on it. We'll report on it if it happens. All right, that's one. Talk five. about talk about Divine. You didn't. You didn't oh, okay. mention no, no. her at all. So so the setting of the movie. If one were to well, if one were to go see the movie, uh, it's set in the seventies. Um, and it, it uh, uh, Giamatti plays this uh, this professor who gets stuck, uh, basically uh, uh, taking care of these kids over the the, the the holiday break, who are just stuck there because they have nowhere to go. Um, these kids in this in the Barton Academy, a, a New England boarding school, uh, and Divine Joy Randolph plays a, um, a cafeteria administrator who is also there because she has nowhere to go. Um, And uh, she recently lost her son in Vietnam. So she plays a a mother uh, who lost her son, who's grieving over that still um, uh, after a few years of losing her son. And yet her performance is like, it's tragic. She she conveys the sadness, but also like she fits perfectly well with like this curmudgeon, Paul Giamatti and this kid who um, he's taking care of. Um, yeah, I think it works really well. Um, th- this trio of characters, and she uh, she is great. She, she she is as great as people are saying. And if she wins the Oscar, I think it's gr- good on her to win that Oscar. There you go. That's it. That's Devon Jory Randolph. All right, my number four. Uh, number four. Um, <laughs> this is a film. Another nice. pretty big ensemble film that. Um, is a very formulaic uh, Hollywood uh, feel good kind of story. And I think this actress, uh, she comes in only in a few, in my memory, she's only in a handful of scenes, but when she does, she's is playing again, another very formulaic role. Um, but uh, she does it with uh, lots of conviction and she's very strong. Uh, in the role of Michael Jordan's mother. That's right. It's Viola <laughs> Davis in air. Hey, Viola Davis in air. Yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I, uh, I, I think she brings a lot of, uh, intensity to the scene she's in and a, a lot of, uh, like you, you just believe her, uh, her like, uh, love for Michael, you know, like her, her, like her belief in her son, uh, that type of thing. Um, you know, akin to another sports, uh, like schlocky thing from a few years ago that I also liked quite a bit. Uh, um, uh, King Richard. Um, oh yeah. 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 It's, it's akin to that, except for she's a very minor supporting character who only shows up a couple times, but yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think she uh, makes a large, uh, presence, uh, that's, the film. That's one movie we haven't talked about yet on this episode. I mean, this series just started. I mean, I mean, come on, listeners. I mean, this, this is the beginning. When, when were we supposed to talk about it? This episode? <laughs> <laughs> there was no point in the episode really where we should have talked about it. But air. Do you think? Do you think that has has, has a chance of, of getting some noms, Siobhan? Air. Snowball's chance in hell. I think. Really? <laughs> but like, like it's. I think it's an outsider. I think it's like. Like, it's in, I think, like, everything it would have a chance at, you know, like, screenplay, editing, uh, uh, Viola Davis, I bet they're all in, like, top ten of contenders, and, like, they're all very, very slight chances, but probably not. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, when it came out... you know what, with Best Picture, like, having ten... Best Picture actually seems like the most likely nomination for it. <laughs> It'll just get a Best Picture nomination, which I know, like that that's happened. Yeah, which you know, I you know, I I uh, just to uh, just agree with you here. I'm like, yeah, I if anything, I think it'd be crazy enough to get a Best Picture nomination because I do. Th- I, I I'm not a huge fan of that movie of Air, but there are a lot of fans of it. I think. When it came out, it kind of felt like, oh, this might end up being an Oscar nominee down the line, because I think it has that 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 push of like audiences liked it a lot, critics liked it, Siobhan liked it. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, you know, I'd say it's a maybe at this point. You know? Yeah, hey, t- take it from me. 
in uh, <laughs> first week of December. I'm going to say air, maybe. Put that down, folks. <laughs> All right, my number four, Scarlett Johansson in Asteroid City. Okay, I was, I was, I was thinking this one would come up. Yeah, take me down to Asteroid City. Uh, I love Asteroid City. Um, yeah. e- even though, like, I kind of rate it low on my Wes Anderson list, uh, low middle in ranking uh, the Wes Anderson movies, I still think Asteroid City is 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 so solid, and it it is a an amazing ensemble yet again, and it is a movie about actors. It's about performances. It's mm-hmm. a, it's about telling the story through these performances. More specifically, Scarlett Johansson plays an actress who is you know preparing for a role um, in this movie, and it, I don't know, like, like I, and she plays an actress who's playing an actress who's preparing. She plays an act. Yeah, that's right. That's right. She plays an actress playing an actress. There there are layers in this movie, and I I don't know. I I like her a lot in um in other movies in other movies I've seen her in, but in this movie in particular. Uh, I think it's her. F- it might be her first um, Wes Anderson movie, I th- or she may have done a voice in another movie. But it may this may be her first live action Wes Anderson movie, and she fits right in. Uh, uh, she she has the the heartbreak. She has the you know flat delivery that's also funny. Um, I don't know. I I liked her a lot in Asteroid City, um, and yeah, she's one of my favorite supporting actresses of the year. I think there's like two real sources of heart in that movie, uh, in the characters. And I think, uh, it's her and, uh, Jason Schwartzman. Yeah. Um, especially later on in the movie as things get revealed as like the entire thing being a stage play. She has that beautiful moment. Uh, actually, is it Scarlett Johansson? Um, that <clears throat> no, 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 no. You're thinking of I'm Barbie thinking of, herself. You're thinking of Margot Robbie. I'm, I'm thinking of Margot Robbie. Yeah. yeah, never mind. But Scarlett Johansson is quite good. Yeah, I think so. It, it was. It she was she, t- was. she was in my contentions. I did not pick her though. It was tough for me to to kind of pick her over other picks. Are, are we going to do uh, also Rands? Are we going to do honorable mentions after, at the end of this too? Yeah, there's a couple. I'd I like have to a few. Say. All right, all right. You're, you're next. Go ahead. Um, moving on to number three. I'm going to say number three. <clears throat> America Ferreira in Barbie. Hey, look at that. It happened. America Ferreira. It happened. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about America Ferreira in Barbie. I love that she is like playing the opposite of what you would expect the mother character to be. That you would expect the mother character to be the one that's like, <clears throat> you have to drop these childhood things. And uh, instead, it's like the kid who's a bit more like trying to move away from childish things and like yeah. who's like lost her her Christmas spirit in a way. And it's the mother trying to give it back to her. Um, I, I think she's just so, so, so fun. And, and like in a movie of like purposeful, like plasticity and stuff where everybody's kind of stay stay it in their performances. Um, uh, I, I think she brings the most real animation uh she yeah. she is the most uh realistic and like grounded human character and uh i think she does a phenomenal job at it uh she she makes me care she made me uh her her character was the one i was most invested in uh by far yeah i think i think she's just great in the movie yeah and i think uh hey i mean i don't want to spoil it i actually haven't seen the gold derby list uh, in a while so maybe she's on it maybe she does have that chance yeah i wonder of I wonder. getting a nomination um I, I i would not be uh upset if she gets a nomination i liked her a lot in that movie i wouldn't i wouldn't be pissed no you because you're she's on your list you doofus yeah she's right there <laughs> piece of shit number three uh my number three if air had a snowball's chance in hell then this uh performer has even less of a chance uh, what's what's less than a snowball's chance in hell? Um, uh, uh, a fireball's chance in heaven. <laughs> Selma Hayek in Magic Mike's Last Dance. <laughs> Marcelo, I knew you were gonna take us there. Yeah, uh, I had to. Uh, you I had mean, to. Not to spoil our best picture episode, but uh, Magic Mike's Last Dance is my number one movie of the year. <laughs> 
uh, and it didn't spoil anything. No, I mean people. If people <laughs> if people follow me on on Twitter, they and follow me on Letterbox, they should know I'm a, I'm I'm in I'm in the back for Soderberg, and watching Magic Mike's Last Dance in a theater in New York, in a Dolby Cinema theater in New York, on Super Bowl Sunday, uh, perfect perfect way to watch that movie. No experience has topped that this year for me. Uh, I, I I loved watching it there. I love the movie itself, um, and I think uh, Sama Hayek is excellent in Magic Mike's Last Dance. She's a perfect counterpart to Magic Mike, the titular Magic Mike. I actually wasn't sure if I should put Sama Hayek in the Best Actress category. I but yeah, I, I I I was wondering about that too. It's tough, but but I went with with um, supporting actress because. At this point, who cares? It's uh, nobody else is going to have this conversation except me and you, Siobhan. Of like, where where does Sama Hayek go in supporting actress or supporting <laughs> actor? Uh, sorry, supporting uh, actress or best actress uh, in our categories. Nobody that's else. That's a shame because I, genuinely, I, I uh, she's I think she's being overlooked. I think. Uh, yeah. I, I, I I'm I'm totally with you here. Yeah, so I went with supporting actress, uh, but easily she is she could be uh, considered the the lead actress. But anyway, uh, that's besides the point. Magic Max Last Dance, again, I think she's amazing. And she's sexy. She's smart. Uh, she's so she's fucking sexy. <laughs> <laughs> she uh, uh, she conveys like this passion that is sometimes scary, but also like you you know why a character like Mike Magic Mike would like fall in love with her. Um, cause she has like, like that creativity that is like trying to come out and they both, they both excel at like bringing the energy out of each other. Um, it's why I love that movie. I think they the, both are great together. The, the last two of these movies have, have like such a, a good amount of fun and like, uh, artificiality to them. The first one, it's extremely grounded and I think a little bit yeah. to its detriment. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> by the third one. Uh, we're just dealing with like a super rich Salma Hayek beyond her means, giving Mike the uh, the dream perform like allowing giving him an infinite budget to make the dream performance. Um, because because <clears throat> what what's her motivation? Her she's her her oh, husband. Yeah. Her uh, husband like owns the theater or something. Yeah, and uh, they're they're separating, and like uh, she. She, she, I think in the, in the, uh, cause they're not divorced yet, but like her name is on the theater and like, uh, they're like, oh, we're separating. So this theater's mine now. So I can do whatever I want. So I'm going to cancel the, the long running play that was playing here and put on a stripper show instead. <laughs> just to, just to, <laughs> it's so great. Just to say fuck you to my future ex husband. And, uh, just, just champagne, just champagne problems. It's so great. It's yeah. so, uh, this, yeah, I really, yeah, and she's amazing playing it. Ah, uh, but yeah, amazing. that's my number three. I mean, what what could my number one, two, and one be? You'll find out <laughs> later. I'm curious. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Uh, my number two, uh, Guslaji Malanda in Saint Omer. Ah, yes, Saint Omer. I finished it like within an hour before we started recording, and uh, I'm I was really floored by it. And especially uh, Guslaji's uh, performance. Uh, she plays uh, Lawrence, uh, the uh, a woman who uh, is on trial for uh, murdering her uh, baby, uh, her 15, 15 month old baby, leaving her on the beach to get swallowed up by the waves. It's a horrific uh, crime. It's one of those like tabloid stories you read about. This brings like a lot of the the humanity to like why how could a woman uh do this to her child and but she doesn't do it through overacting through the Hollywood way that you would expect. There are a lot of extended courtroom scenes in this movie and I actually timed it out. It's almost exactly 20 minutes. It's a little over 20 minutes. Wow. Um that is just the uh, interview between I I don't know how the hell court works over in France. This is a French movie, but like, it's a, it's an interview between in the courtroom between, uh, uh, Lawrence and the judge, um, and the judges getting her to, uh, state all the facts of, uh, uh, coming to the act. Um, and like, she's basically 
going through her entire life. And I would not be surprised if this is like a one take situation and it's, it's just an insane like tour de force, like 20 minutes of, of I say tour de force. I guess that's a wrong word. Cause I guess that implies more than, the, than, than what you see from her, which is just absolute, absolute humanity. She's a completely <clears throat> kind of normal, uh, emotionless isn't the right word, but she's just kind of plainly stating everything, um, about her life, her childhood, her relationship with the husband, her, not the husband, uh, the, the, the father of the baby. And she gives another one of those that's about 15 minutes, I think, um, a little later in the film, uh, where she's actually being pressed more, um, by, um, by the opposing side and, um, you see the emotions start to bubble out of her uh, and, uh, until like kind of under the surface until she can't handle it and some starts to let out, but it's still restrained in such a really uh, powerful way. Um, no, yeah, it's, it, it is an incredible movie. It is. I, I did see this in January of this past year. Um, it reminds me of Anatomy of a Fall in ways, because uh, uh, Anatomy is also French. I, I, I looked this up. Uh, Anatomy of a Fall is or was on the short list of uh, French films uh, to be nominated or possibly be nominated for Best International Film at the Oscars. Um, but it is also a French courtroom drama similar to Saint Omer. Um, but I think Saint Omer is, I think, just a uh, more impactful, more engrossing, it, and I think it's due to the performances in uh, Saint Omer. Uh, what Guslaji, what her character is getting across, Lawrence, and then also how that is, how how that's affecting uh, Reina, our protagonist, who is uh, there to observe um uh, she's doing she's supposedly doing research for a book that she wants to write but it seems like the more the story goes uh, you learn more things and uh it seems like maybe she's there more for personal reasons than uh her actual research and uh, oh my god oh my god it's just it's so it's phenomenal it is now is there anything else you want to say about this performance in this movie before i reveal just something go. here just go ahead and go okay now you're kind of this is a 2023 film right shut the fuck up <laughs> i had to, i had to double check uh, look if it's some bullshit like it premiered in 10 theaters in december okay I, I'm, I'm calling it a 2023 movie um now i just said i did see it in january 2023 so yeah by that metric, yes, it's a twenty twenty it's a twenty twenty three movie. But uh in terms of Oscars, it was officially submitted as France's pick for last year. Really? Yeah. Um Wow. It said it made the shortlist for Best International Film and did not get nominated, but officially it was France's pick for Best International Film. Well, I mean Okay, I, I don't know. It's just like, wh- no. when was it available to the general public? When did when did? Well, I think yeah, like I said, like I, I saw it. In I January. did know about it as a festival film last year. I, yeah. I knew about it, but it's it, been on my radar for a long time. I think it was at Cannes last year, um, mm-hmm. but I think it was released theatrically. Um, it may have been limited in December, but I think it officially, you know, uh, was released in like. Early 2023, so right. I'll uh, give you it. Right. By that I'll metric, you win. Thank, thank you. I win. Yeah, you <laughs> this is how I win. That this is how you win. But uh, you know, if mir- miraculously somehow gets nominated for best international film this year, <laughs> <laughs> then we're trying it again. <laughs> they're like, you know what? Never mind. We we messed up last year. Let's put it again. The triangle said it's not French. Uh, listen, we, we could dive into this more, but we don't <laughs> have to. <laughs> uh, 
Also, yeah, uh, Anatomy of a Fall is is not going to be nominated for Best International Film. So France this year chose to submit The Pot au Fraud instead of Anatomy of a Fall, which sparked controversy with French insiders claiming that the director of Anatomy of a Fall was being punished for criticizing French President Emmanuel Macron. Mm. So controversy. No, no, no. No, 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 they say. Wee oui, wee. Oui. All right, that's your number two. My number two? It's the Swinton herself, Tilda. For the killer. The killer. Pew, pew, bang, bang. Bang, bang, bang. Woo, 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 woo. A scant two scenes, but how impactful <laughs> they are. Uh, yeah, she's in it for very little time, but oh boy. Her her little speech. I mean, I mean, come on. The killer, it's about a killer. That's all I needed to know, folks. She does this little speech. <laughs> she does that little speech. She does that little speech. Uh, Fincher uses a CGI technology to transform her into a 12-year-old girl. So she's a tiny little girl saying, I'm a little, little girl doing a speech. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. She plays a killer. She has one conversation with Michael Fassbender uh, towards the end of the movie. And she just lays out basically his whole MO. She lays out just the life he's leading is bullshit. Um, she, she gives the thesis of the movie in this conversation through uh, a, a a joke concerning a bear and a hunter. I love Tilda Swinton. I like that she can just come into a movie and kind of just steal the movie and kind of just say, now it's my movie. I'm the actor now. I'm the actor. <laughs> she is listed uh, as uh, her character is called the expert. You can call her the expert actress supporting on, in my book. I sure would. Oh boy! All right, so that was my number two. Uh, you know, I can't. I, 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 I'll say this one more, one more, one more thing. I'll say uh, the killer. The movie might not show up a lot on my lists this season. Okay, this might be the only mention of the killer uh, uh, in this awards thing we do. But I'm glad it was Tilda. I pointed out because I think she she might be the best thing about the movie. As much as I love the direction, the sound editing. Maybe, maybe, maybe if we do a sound episode, maybe it'll come up. But mm. uh, everything else, I think the cinematography is solid. The direction, of course, is solid. But I think Sw- Tilda Swinton, I think, steals the show. So there you go, Tilda Swinton, the killer, my, my number two. Uh, I, I love. She plays like <clears throat> you can tell her fear. She knows what's going to happen, but she's just like trying to like die with dignity. You know, like she's yeah. just trying to keep it straight. Let me enjoy my last meal while I'm here. Um, she does make a very impactful performance in just two scenes: uh, the, yeah. the dinner scene and then walking away, and she gets killed. Yeah. Spoiler alert uh, for the film The Killer: People yeah. get killed. Yeah. Um, yeah, Marcelo, um, not going to have much to say here because, uh, it's already been said my number one, number one, number one, it's Salma Hayek and Magic Mike's last dance. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I honestly did not see that coming. I did. Uh, <laughs> I, for, for a while there, I forgot you had seen the movie. <laughs> Marcelo, I love the movie as well. I well, think good. we're going to overlap a lot here. Wow. Wow. I, I, you know what? This was all worthwhile. You know, we can stop here. I'm going to use my black ball to stop the episode right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You, you, you talk about Semi Hayek and Magic Mike. I did. Dance. You did already? I did okay. earlier all right. when well, we were that, with that. it. But, but like, yeah, she's just wonderful. She's fun. She's sexy. She's sex- sexy. Sexy. <laughs> she's just char- charming. Sure sexy. She's She's just, she's portraying this like, uh, old rich bitch. Um, <laughs> you said it. Who's, who's, uh, who's, uh, just trying to get back at her, uh, trying to, uh, fuck over her, her, uh, husband that she's divorcing. And it's such a, it's such a fun, funny character. It's the most I've noticed her in a very long time, I think. Um, Selma Hayek, and I think the the most well used she has been in a long time, to that matter, unless I'm forgetting something. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the the perfect, the perfect uh, lady for Mike to have his last dance with. Yeah, I hey, I'm, I agree. She she was my number whatever. So three uh, three. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and we'll we'll talk. I think hey, you know, if you ask me, 
I'm going to bring up Magic Mike's Last Dance at least a few more times this season. So I, I feel like I am going to. All right. My number one. It's my turn, right? My number I'm one. I'm so excited to hear this. You'll never guess what my number one is. You're correct. It's uh, Michelle Rodriguez <laughs> in Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> no, it's Michelle Rodriguez in Fast X. <laughs> Uh, it is uh, now, now. This one was tricky because I had to look up the like what category she was in, in in like other awards bodies, and I went to Gold Derby and I was like, I want to make sure you know the other actress in this movie is like lead actress, so I could put this actress in supporting actress. I'm not going to take a guess, but I've got one in mind. Um, and if, if, she, and if she, there's somebody, there's somebody who I think isn't going to come up that I'm surprised about. Well, I mean, we're also going to talk about our honorable mention, so she might uh, show up there. But for you, my, my number one is Julianne Moore in May, December. Mm-mm-mm. Ooh, doggy. Oh, yeah. That movie I didn't know about, so I didn't get to see. <laughs> now, for a second, I thought, is Natalie Portman the supporting actress or is Julianne Moore the supporting actress? I guess technically Portman is the lead. And Julianne Moore is the supporting, but sure. at, in my heart, I think they're co-leads. Like they're you one. Can't, there can't be two women leading. <laughs> no possible. way. That you know what you, you uh, you're talking crazy, Siobhan. Two women leading a movie? No. <laughs> but the choice had to be made. I, I put Julianne Moore in, in best supporting actress, and she is my well, favorite. Hold on, hold on. It's it's Adam and Eve. Not <laughs> what's the girl version of that? Uh, even. Eve, Eve and Eve. <laughs> it's not. It's Adam and Eve, not Eve and Eve. <laughs> We're doing great stuff. Go to our Patreon to get more of this. Um, Julianne Moore. Uh, we'll talk about this movie, or I'll talk about it. Maybe Siobhan will talk about it when she sees it. But we'll talk about it uh, more as as this uh, as this series goes on. But. There, I want to talk about this. There's, there's this, uh, and this is a very mm. like film Twitter bubble bullshit thing. People were arguing uh, over the weekend about this being camp or not. This movie. Do you know anything about this, Siobhan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. I did. Uh, like I saw somebody like being upset that people were calling the movie a comedy and stuff. In terms of the Golden Globes, it is a is it, it is a comedy. <laughs> It's what? going to be, yeah, it's, yeah. When, when people find this out, when people uh, uh, wake up Golden Globes nomination morning to find out that May, December is, is in the comedy section, they're going to go nuts because that's where Netflix is putting it in the comedy section at the Golden Globes. Great. It is a, it, the word is nuanced. It is a nuanced movie. It deals with heavy subjects, but, and at times, a campy way in a good way the way i want to use it is not derogatory at all it is a prestigious it, it, it's a prestige movie in a way but also it lampoons the prestige movie Natalie portman plays an actress who uh goes to um uh julianne moore and says uh they're gonna they're gonna make a movie about your life so i'm going to follow you for like a week and just i want i want to know who you are as a person so i can play you in a movie and julianne moore plays this character who is this uh this woman who uh decades ago was caught having an affair with a a a minor uh, who um, is played by Charles Melton in the current day. So it is disturbing. It is also at times funny. And I think Julianne Moore, uh, along with the other actors in this movie, it, she balances both really well. She's evil. She's sinister. Uh, you, but you do have compassion for her. It's everything. It's a fantastic performance. Nuanced performance. That's May December. That's Julianne Moore. That's my favorite supporting actress of the year. I'm done talking. Thank you so much for doing this, Marcelo, um, <laughs> for presenting your top five picks of the year. Yeah, uh, for supporting actress. Yeah. Now, now I want to say this on Mike. Siobhan just sent me a screen cap uh, from the Netflix account. Um, I'm going to read this. So Netflix tweeted this out on December first. 
and has since deleted it. Uh, they shared a picture of Julianne Moore and Natalie Portman from May December, and the uh, tweet is, "Y'all want to hear a story about why me and this bitch fell out? It's gonna, <laughs> it's kind of long, but full of surprise, full of suspense." So yeah, no, it's uh, <laughs> listen, <laughs> nuance, nuance, people. <laughs> It's about it's, it's, it's about statutory yeah. rape. <laughs> <laughs> I saw somebody on Twitter uh, do a do a uh, double feature of the movie with "That's My Boy." <laughs> no. <funny. laughs> oh God! Again, I'll say <laughs> at times it's funny. At times it is absurd, but also by the end, and I think it's because of the three main. Uh, it's because of the three. Uh, actors. It's because of Portman, it's because of Julianne Moore, and especially Charles Melton. Melton especially, by the end, you know the story you're watching. You know how like like deeply disturbing this whole thing is because of his performance and, and the actress's performances. Anyway, dude, <laughs> I understand the, um, the, the wanting to make this kind of like a punchline, but really, what it's trying to say, it's something more than just a flippant joke. So, anyway. People can have fun, sure. But remember, there's fucking nuance in there. Anyway, that's all I want to say. Sure we, sure, sure, we want a new tar this year. We got to have a tar. There must be a tar. But statutory rape. All right. Was that it? But uh, Does anybody play a guitar <laughs> in the film? Uh, are also Rans. Are honorable mentions. Can yes. I just can I just zip through mine, please? Okay, Vanessa Kirby and Napoleon. Um, uh, she's at the bottom of my, of my honorable mentions. I just wish there was more of her in Napoleon. Uh, uh, and I do like Napoleon the movie, um, but they 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 do. I not... like Napoleon the man. <laughs> honor the man, honor the film, Napoleon. <laughs> Vanessa Kirby is good. I wish there was more of her in it. Uh, America Ferrera. Barbie, she is very, very good. I won't be upset if she gets a supporting actress nomination. Uh, Penelope Cruz in Ferrari. I just watched this last night. She is as good as Adam Driver in Ferrari. Um, she almost made my list. But man, and maybe if I sit on it more, I'll think, yeah, sh- sh- she'll make my top five. But for now, no, not yet. No, I got I to gotta think on Ferrari. Emily Blunt, Oppenheimer. Uh, the movie would not be as good as it is if it wasn't for her performance, especially at the very end. I think she she kind of nails why that movie works. Um, she's a key part to Oppenheimer. Anne Hathaway, Eileen, uh, very good. Hmm. I don't want to say too much about it, but she, <laughs> you are so unsure of what this character is coming in. You may have some idea of which of who she is, but then as it progresses, you have, you're like, "Oh no, what am I in for?" Uh, Hathaway, fantastic. My final honorable mention: uh, Mara Tierney, The Iron Claw. Uh, she doesn't have a lot of screen time, but when she's on screen during certain scenes, holy hell! She uh, and she she plays uh, the mom of the brothers. Uh, of, of this wrestling uh, group, um, the Von Erichs. And yeah, if you know what happens in that movie, you know what she goes through. So yeah, the, those are my honorable mentions. Siobhan. Uh, my honorable mentions. Um, I had Scarlett Johansson written down for Asteroid City. Uh, Tessa Thompson in Creed 3. Oh, yeah. Um, I wanted to, like, I, I'm thinking back to Creed 1 and how, like, I would absolutely nominate her for that. And like, I love how their, uh, how their, uh, relationship has, uh, um, uh, advanced over the last three movies. Uh, but I'm just, if I'm being honest, I can't necessarily pick out anything she did in this movie. I just know it was good. Uh, so otherwise, but, but look, I just, I love that fucking character. Mommy's with the maggots. Now Alyssa Sutherland in evil dead rise, a uh, very scary performance. Yeah. Um, as somebody who is, it's a very, it felt very personal to me. And, uh, she did a, a fantastic job of, like, you know, kind of being like a 
doting mother who just turns into a monster on a flip and she's so good at both. Um, and then, uh, I also have, <laughs> this one's a little weird. Um, I nominate Sadie Sandler from you are so not invited to my bat mitzvah. Um, and it's kind of, uh, an overall nomination for, for everybody in that movie. It's like an ensemble kind of, uh, um, have, uh, happy Madison production. Uh, the girls, Adam Sandler's children, I think they're really given great spot, great, great time to shine. And, and like, uh, somebody said this is the first, uh, movie that Adam Sandler's in, in the fur in like, the last 20 something years that he is not the headliner. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. And, uh, like he really gave that spot to his daughters and they shine. Um, and they're, they're really funny in the movie. Okay. Um, and then look, I would not be doing my job. as a saw fan. If I did not oh. bring up, if I did not bring up Sonove McCody Lund and Shawnee Smith from saw X. Yeah. Uh, Sonove Kenody, uh, uh, Sonove Makoti Lund, um, as the, uh, the evil woman who runs the operation that Jigsaw gets, uh, um, the scam that Jigsaw gets brought in on. Uh, there are so many levels of, uh, <laughs> of, of like evil that come out of her character as the film progresses, um. And she does such a good job of like hiding them and then transitioning into them. Um, she's fantastic. And then Shawnee Smith, it's, it's like she never left the role. She has not played it since like what, 2006, 2007. Yeah. Uh, she's not played Amanda and it's like, it's like she never left. She slips right back into that, uh, role that is so beloved to me and so many other saw fans. And we get new sides to her character and her relationship with, uh, John Kramer, not only is Jigsaw back, but Amanda's back. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, it's, uh, she's, 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 she's phenomenal in the movie. Um, and I just loved seeing her back and she absolutely killed it. Those are my honorable mentions. Speaking of Jigsaw being back, I'm sure he'll be back for the best actor episode. And you know what? Now that we mention it, um, or since you mentioned it earlier, um, being Margot Robbie in Asteroid City, I want to say her over Scarlett Johansson. She has one scant scene, but that scene is the most emotional one in the film to me. And I think she's just phenomenal in it. Like she shows up for three minutes and nearly makes you cry. Um, I, yeah. I, even, I even, I'd even put her over Scarlett Johansson. You know what? That's fair. Uh, you, know, I, you know what? I'll put Margot Robbie in my honorable mentions. So there, done. I'm gonna write that. Yeah. Write that down. <laughs> no, you're not happy. <laughs> no, no, I am. I am happy. All right. You better I'm be saying yeah. All right. All right. We gotta do one more thing. <laughs> we gotta do. We gotta do one more thing before we go to. Oh, we do. Uh, the old derby on. game. What, what's your one more thing? I think we both know. We got to go to the Discord. We got to go to the Discord. Everybody, you can come to the Discord. Everybody can join. Talkfilmsociety.com slash Discord or reach out to any of us um, on Twitter. We will let, we will give you a, di- a link to the Discord. Please come in. Please. We have fun conversations about pil- film. About and wrestling, as well. apparently. And fucking wrestling. Yeah, we're talking about wrestling a lot, but we need more people to do it. Uh, <laughs> so far, it's me and and two other people. Uh, <laughs> but we do it a fucking lot. Uh, okay. Did you hear uh, re- Ken Shamrock is coming back to the WWE? No, I did not hear that. All right. Well, m- more on that. No, I just, before we started recording, I saw a tweet that said, Ken Shamrock signs on for WWE. Oh, oh God. <laughs> All right. Well, ta- okay. So more on that on Discord. Have, we have a whole channel in there devoted to awards, and I went in there to awards season, and I went in there and asked people, Hey, what are your favorite top five support, favorite supporting actress uh, picks of the year? And uh, our first uh, respondent, he he even put his in here before anybody else did before, before I even asked the damn fucking question. <laughs> Calm down. Uh, it's uh, our friend, the real Matt C. Uh, Matt Kirion. Um I know him. He says Randolph in the holdovers. That's that's divine, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, he says Scar Joe in Asteroid City. Talked about much. Uh, he says Pew in Oppenheimer. 
He says Ferrara in Barbie, and he says Swinton in The Killer. Nice. So, thanks. Florence Pugh, by the way, I think she's good in... She's having a moment. <laughs> Do you think For- Florence Pugh is having a moment, Siobhan? <laughs> it's uh, it's arguable, yeah. I, I, I kind of should have, should have said in the middle of your Evil Dead Rise uh, uh, shout out, I should have said, Siobhan... Do you think horror is having a moment? <laughs> no, no, no. I think it goes. I, I, I think the joke goes. Uh, do you think horror? Do you think we're in a golden age of horror? <laughs> golden age of horror. That's yeah. what it is. Uh, uh, Jay McMillan, one of my wrestling friends, uh, he comes in with uh, Divine Divine Joy Randolph in the Holdovers. A lot of love for her. Julianne Moore, day de- May December. Marcella talked at length about her. Wouldn't shut up. <laughs> Way about too her. much. <laughs> Uh, Claire Foy in All of Us Strangers. Anything to say there? I think you mentioned her. Claire Foy? I did not mention. I mentioned All of Us Strangers. You mentioned All of Us Strangers, yeah. Uh, and, and you think that's going to win Best Picture because it's a movie that you think is going to come out of nowhere. It's like, oh, it's a British movie <laughs> with, with Paul Mescal? Okay, Best Picture. Claire Foy. Claire Foy. Did you see it? I have not seen All of Us Strangers. All right, we'll talk about it later then. Mara Tierney in The Iron Claw. Yeah, um, I, I mentioned it. Mentioned her. Viola Davis in Air. Thank you, Jay McMillan. Thank you. Uh, host co host on uh, the Talk Film Society Network of uh, the uh, the show Cinema to the Letter. Oh, you got it. Um, yeah, I know this guy. Uh, <laughs> it's it's uh, it's Tommy uh, Tommy Tom, Thomas Marinara Tom, Tommy Marinara. What's his real name? Tommy. <laughs> Thomas Mar- Thomas Jesus Mariani. Christ, Thomas Mariani. Um, okay, he says Divine Joy Randolph in The Holdovers. Wow. Uh, Patty Lapone in Bo is Afraid. That's interesting. What do you got? Uh, she she almost made my honorable mentions, but it, it, Bo is Afraid feels like that came out like a, a two years ago. I, I need to revisit it. And I was just reminded it's three hours long. That that just that just came and went for me. Really, I loved it when it came out, but now it's kind of disintegrated from my mind. I'm waiting for it to hit a streamer. It just hasn't happened yet. Yeah. Uh, Julianne Moore, May December, Tilda Swinton, The Killer, and Ruby Cruz in Bottoms. I still haven't seen Bottoms. Bottoms is a it's a recommended for me. I need watch Bottoms. I need to write that down on my uh, 2023 to see. I forgot. I totally forgot about it. I think you might yeah. enjoy Bottoms. I, wanna, I do want to see it. Right, write that um, down. Uh, Ruby Cruz, anything about her? Uh, I'm going to be honest. I do not know who she plays. All right. Thank I, you, Tommy. I Thank you, Tommy. I'm going to look, I'm gonna look um, her up. And it looks like... No, we got two more here. Um, Aaron, my other wrestling friend, she says, Julianne Moore in May-December, uh, Dagmara Domenchik in the Priscilla. Um, anything about that one? Uh, I, I like Priscilla the movie. I'm going to be honest. I do not know who that character, who that actress is. I looked that up too. Priscilla was here for like one week and I I so wish I would have went to it. Couldn't make it happen. Uh, Emily Blunt in Oppenheimer, Patty Lapone in Bo is Afraid. And then another one interesting here, uh, Park Hee in, uh, Concrete Utopia, which I don't know anything about. I'm blanking on two. I do not know Concrete Utopia. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Aaron. And then you our final. Us. Our final. Oh, uh, hold on. Senator. Breaking oh, news. Oh, oh, wait, wait. Uh, Dagmara Doma- Dominicus, right? That's her That's her name? It's like Czech, like Dominchek. Yes, yes. Right? Dominchek, yeah. Uh, uh, she is Priscilla's mom in Priscilla. But you may also know her from the hit TV show Succession. Oh shit! Uh, I have she, to look her up. She's the uh, the 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 media woman, the the PR lady. Who just, ah, she, yes. she, she she's she on the indeed. plane when you know blank dies. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, I mean, when the McDonald's spo- spokesperson dies. <laughs> And also, Ruby Cruz is very good in Bottoms. I just looked at who she plays. Um, a very memorable character. Uh, maybe my favorite character in the movie. So I'm glad I Googled this. I do not know anything about Concrete Utopia. So you got me there. I can look that up as you. Is there one more? Is there one more person? Aaron, you got us beat. Our finale. We're ending off with friend of the website, 
friend of the site, uh, Sam shot first, uh, Sam Ben Heron. Uh, I think that was my bit last year. Is like I kept calling him friend of the show. <laughs> yeah, friend of the site. Friend of the site. Uh, yeah, Emily Blunt in Oppenheimer. Uh, Tilda Swinton, the killer. Uh, Gulf Shift Day Farahani in Extraction Two, which, by the way, he knows what he's talking about. I love that nomination. Uh, All right, she's fantastic. All right. Uh, Madeline Una Voiles uh, in The Creator. You have to see. Anything? Uh, the, the Creator is fine. I'm not in love with it, um, but I think it's a solid pick. Rina Sawayama in John Wick Chapter 4, which, uh, hey, I like that nom as well. He said he was going for action here, and he did it. He did it. Um, I, uh, she, was, she was really good. She was really, really good. Um of anybody in that movie, I think like if I had to see a movie with that person in it, it would be her. Ah, uh, okay. I looked up Concrete Utopia. Uh, you you got me there, Aaron. Uh, it is eligible for the best international feature film category. It's South Korea's pick. Um, Ooh. But uh, but yeah, maybe we'll talk about that later on. Uh, all right. Well, yeah. If there's and, any way to watch it, I'll, I'll try to. Just for you, Aaron. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Tommy. Thanks, Jay. And and Matt. And Matt. Oh, of course. Thanks, Matt Curion. Of course, for everything you do. <laughs> Come on. I'm kidding around. He uh, he's not gonna listen to this anyway. <laughs> uh, okay. Finally, this is the longest episode we've ever done. But this is crazy. Yeah. We, we got to do this. It's the Gold Derby game. I had a lot of fun. But yeah, it's the gold derby it's the game. The gold derby game. Now, this my is... favorite part of all Oscar <laughs> is when at the end of every episode, I quiz Siobhan on uh, who gold derby lists uh, yeah. as their predictions uh, of, of, of who's going to win the Oscar uh, this year in in every category. So this category, best supporting actress, and if you don't know gold derby, yeah, it's long running sites. Uh, full of experts and just r- r- random people who just you know are, are trying to predict the Oscars. Uh, that's all I need to know. Um, I've been going to this site for years. Uh, it has helped me win Oscar pools, is what I'll say. Uh, okay, now, mm-hmm. Siobhan, here's the game. Can you mm-hmm. guess the top five? Uh, it's listed as one through five. One being the number one choice. Uh, five being number five choice, but you can pick whatever one you want. Uh, just name names. Can you guess these actresses? I've heard this lady's name simply too much. Uh, <laughs> Divine Joy Randolph. Exactly. Too much because she's on this list. And she what is, I'll reveal it, the number one choice this week. Oh. Um, after her, I gotta go Emily Blunt. Uh, you are correct that she is on this list. She is at number three. Emily Blunt. Bam. You got Bam. her. You got her. I'm thinking Julianne Moore. Julianne Moore? Unfortunately, no. Mm. This week, not on the list. She is creeping in at number six. Damn. I'm thinking Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett Johansson? No. She wow. is currently at number 17. <laughs> Jeez, really? Yeah. I mean, uh, 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 sad to say that Asteroid City, I don't think it's going to get a single nomination. Maybe production design, yeah. if that. But I kind of wish it would get more nominations, but no. Scarlett so Johansson, that, little chance. That's four guesses from me, so I guess I have one more. Um, yeah. Okay, you know what? Claire Foy, she seems, she seems to get in there. Uh, let's get Claire Foy. Claire Foy, I'm sorry to say, no, uh, she's at number fourteen. Is Viola Davis? Where's she at? Uh, we talked about it. Like where, like where, where are numbers at? Viola Davis, number eleven. Maura Tierney. Uh, Maura Tierney. Give me one second. Scrolling, 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 scrolling. Forty-five. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So, the, look, I got two. <laughs> uh, yeah, you got two. But I'm going to say you would have had a hard time coming up with these other ones. Um, because it's 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 a movie we haven't even mentioned yet. And there are two uh, actresses here 
who are in the top five. The Color Purple, the actresses, Danielle Brooks and Taraja P. Henson. Mm. Uh, Brooks is number two, Taraja P. Henson number four. Number five, Jodie Foster for a Netflix movie called Nyad. I had Nyad written down, and I don't remember where I got the name from. And like I, I, all I had was the word Nyad written down, and I just deleted it because I had no clue what the hell it meant. Yeah, I mean, uh, 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 um, sixty-four-year-old marathon swimmer Diana Nyad attempts to become the first person ever to swim from Cuba to Florida. Yeah. Why? I don't know. I, I, apparently, uh, uh, she's a controversial uh, figure. I, I don't know. Okay, I'm going to be honest. I did hear this weeks ago. Annette Benning is, is, is Diana Nyad. Uh, but the real life person that's based on, she's controversial. She said, said something that's kind of not great. So I kind of just said, I'm not going to watch that. I'm a, um, I, have a, yeah. I have a guess as to what that could be. Yeah. Uh, t- yeah. Take a while guess and you're probably right. Don't as guess. An athlete. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Jodie Foster. Nyad is number five. Um, well, do you want right to hear? <laughs> do, do you want to hear any of the others that I, I didn't mention? If there's anybody interesting, sure. Penelope Cruz is at number seven. For what? Uh, Ferrari. Ferrari. I mentioned that. I mentioned yeah, that. I got to write that one down. Ferrari. You'd be interested in this. America Ferrera is at number eight. Oh wow! Nice. Yeah. Cool. Good for. Her. I think that's all worth mentioning. Uh, honestly, I have not seen The Color Purple anybody yet. From, who, anybody from Napoleon? Uh, Vanessa Kirby, Napoleon 13. 13. Yeah. So, I don't know. Um, I, I honestly don't know about The Color Purple. I It's, it's a question mark for me. I it's, don't know if it's, it's going to be. It's a musical, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's the musical adaptation of the, um, of the movie. Well, I think it was a. It was a mo- yeah, it's a movie first, and then it became a stage musical question mark, and then a, a movie musical question mark. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, I guess it's supposed to be great uh, with great performances, so we'll see. All right, is that it? I think that's it. We've did we did it. That's the show, folks. That's the show. Uh, <laughs> I wish we had a stronger ending than just reading well, names off a list. Uh, yeah, well, I, hey, go to talkfilmsociety.com oh, slash discord. Hold on. Yes, yes. yeah, d- Do that, what Siobhan said. Go Talk to talkfilmsociety.com slash Patreon. Yes. Um, but before that, I think we, we, we did this last series, last yeah. season. We have to take the wild guess, a wild stab at guessing uh, who's going to win the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress. Uh, does, does Divine lose her momentum? That's my question right now. Yeah. And again, uh, uh, the two actresses from The Color Purple, Danielle Brooks, Taraji P. Henson, got Emily Blunt in the running, got Jodie Foster, got Julianne Moore, Penelope Cruz, America Ferreira. Those are the top eight. Uh, Rosamund Pike and Saltburn, which I don't think she's going to get nominated. Saltburn kind of did, it's, it didn't hit as big as they thought it would. It's a good feels movie. Like it feels like it's already flaming out. Uh, uh Sandra Huller, who was the star of uh, Anatomy of a Fall, they have her here for The Zone of Interest, um, which I have not seen yet, but she's at number 10. Anyway, I set off a bunch of names. I, I, I read off a bunch of names. We said a bunch of names earlier. Siobhan, what do you think? Take a wild guess. Best Supporting Actress, Oscars. I'm going to say Divine uh, holds over on it. Yeah, uh, me too. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Not surprising. Uh, at least now. I mean, again, things can change. Yeah, things could change. I, yeah. yeah. Um, all right, but what's not going to change is us. We're going to do this every week for the next 15 weeks. <laughs> These <laughs> episodes. Supporting actor, or do we go to something else first? Oh, that's we right. Know? Well, we're, we haven't decided. It, it would, you know, for the next episode, we should have uh, everything uh, uh, we're going to do like planned. <laughs> So we, yes. we know at least what we're going to, what we're going to talk about next week. We don't know. I don't know what we're going to do next week. Um, we'll talk about it. Uh, I think we should like space out the 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 performance categories. I, kind of agree. I agree. Yeah. So next one we could do cinematography or uh, score or production design 
mm-hmm. or sound <clears throat> or screenplay. Oh, you never original, know, folks. It's going to be exciting. Adapted screenplay or director? No, we're not going to do director next week. It's too soon. No way. No, no, no. Way no, too, no. way too no, soon. No, 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 Hey, no, 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 Save that for January, friend. Um, yeah, but the 15 best weeks. Best picture, maybe? Yeah, let's do best picture next week. Yeah. <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, yeah, like Siobhan said, go to Discord, talkfilmsociety.com slash Discord. Go to the Patreon, patreon.com slash Talk from society. Also, I, I I'm gonna I, I'm gonna r- remind myself to make this um to to record a message and and put this at the beginning of the episode. If you don't know by now, or if you didn't do it earlier, um the feed for this show is gonna have its own separate feed. Wait, that doesn't make sense. These episodes used to just pop on the main feed, and the main feed on Talk from Society, you get all the shows on the network, right? But this uh, this series of episodes are going to have its own feed. So just go to talkfilmsociety.com slash TFSpod to subscribe just to these episodes. So you get no filler. You don't get the cinema to the letters. You don't get the, it pod to be used. You don't get the monsters never die. Uh, you don't get anything else. You just get these episodes over at talkfilmsociety.com slash TFSpod. There. Happy? Thanks and for listening. Thank you. Uh, Siobhan, it's all on you. Um, thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, we'll be back next week with another great installment of the awards podcast. And with that, the winner is you for listening. <laughs>